Hola y buenas, buenas noches. Estamos de regreso otra vez with another Spanish nerd live stream number 68, número 68. Y hoy el tema es, today the, the topic of this live stream is challenges of learning Dominican challenge or Dominican Spanish. Los retos de aprender el español de RD, mi tierra, mi país, mi corazón, la joya de la tierra de este mundo. Porque yo tengo un montón de problemas básicamente con, con este español. Because this is very challenging uh, dialect. I've been working on it for, I'll say, seriously, like two years now. Pero. Yo empecé en 2000, sí, en 2000, en 2021. But I started this journey back in 2021. But initially, I didn't know I was on this journey during my travels, my travel there, or my first trip there. Mi primer viaje allá en el junio de 2021. In June of 2021, I went there just to visit the first time ever in my life. And could not understand anybody, of course, because uh, the Spanish there was uh, quite different from what I was used to. That is an understatement. Pero, uh, the past three years now, I've been working on it, working on developing an accent and learning all things Dominican. So it's been a really fun journey, especially because al principio de mi camino aprendiendo español, Yo, yo no enfoque demasiado en los acentos ni los dialectos al principio. Like the first year, I didn't really focus on like trying to develop an accent or 2020, developing an accent or anything like that. I was just trying to survive. I was just trying to learn grammar. Actually, when I first started to learn Spanish on my own after school, I was just revising a lot of the vocabulary or a lot of vocabulary. And I was also reviewing a lot of my grammar notes from school. So I was just studying that mostly and watching some TV shows. But I was mostly just trying to catch up because I was so confused with everything. Pero bueno, si no me conoces aún, que we am doing this right now after two minutes, pero si no me conoce, me llamo Josue. Me llamo S. Josue en español. Pero en inglés me llamo Joshua. Eh, yo soy el creador de este canal de YouTube and I'm the creator of this YouTube channel here, Spanish Blueprints. And as you can tell, Hopefully, by the number of these these particular live streams and uh, the videos, that I am quite passionate about learning Spanish and language learning and just a nerd in general when it comes to language learning. So definitely geek out on everything language learning and learning Spanish. And I like to talk about my challenges, talk about what I find difficult about learning Spanish. In this case, we're going to be talking about Dominican Spanish, what makes me, what makes it very challenging to learn Dominican Spanish. And many, many problems I've had, many, many problems and issues and insecurities, inseguridades. Also, apart from that, recently, or actually a week ago now, a week and one day, una semana y un día, yo, eh, yo empecé a vender mi primer producto de este canal de YouTube. I started to uh, sell my first ever product of this channel because I just needed to give uh supply even more resources for learning spanish so this particular particularly 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 i can't speak english either is for resources for learning spanish and a lot of the resources that are in this kit uh that i'm selling now here come from all the research i've done throughout the past four years of my spanish learning journey not my own so for me, it's very special because it's like a representation of everything that I've learned thus far. So that's pretty cool. And I'm just like, ah, like videos are good. My Twitter, I, you know, my Twitter, my Instagram, I try to give content about learning Spanish, how I learn Spanish and tips and everything like that. So I'm like, well, now I should start doing products as well so I can give even more uh, to the audience because I just want to, you know, share as much as possible. So that's available right now. Si quieres eh, verlo, si quieres comprarlo. And I'm not sure if, let me see, if you can actually see the link in the chat in the live, or if you can click on it. Let me see. Déjame ver. Pero, if you can't, you can also just get it. Let me see. Déjame ver. 
Yeah, you can. So yeah, it's linked. Yeah, so it's linked in the in the chat. So you can click on that. So you can take a look and just see everything that's included in the kick. I won't talk all, all day about it. You can go kind of see for yourself. See if you like it. If you don't, if you don't need it, if you don't need uh, resources, you can also send the link to one of your friends who may be, you know, learning Spanish and they want to, they want some resources. Pero bueno, so that's available for you now. Um, hopefully, in the future, yo voy a desarrollar más, más productos para, para vender a mi audiencia, a todos ustedes, a todos los estudiantes de, de español, porque me encanta dar lo, eh, lo más contenido posible. Y pero me, primero que nada, uno de los defis, eh, uno, uno de los, ay mi madre, uno de los retos es hablando con un acento. So that's probably one of the most, one of the biggest challenges for me, for me right now when it comes to learning Dominican Spanish. So for me, developing my Dominican accent, I kind of include that under the umbrella of challenges of learning Dominican Spanish. So learning Dominican Spanish for me is like learning, you know, la jerga, the slang, eh, expresiones uh, coloquiales, y aparte de eso, también incluye el acento, la cultura, la música, eh, todo que tiene que ver con RD, básicamente. So that's what is really difficult for me right now because I had I've been slacking. I'm not gonna lie. I've been slacking a lot when it comes to speaking with an accent. Unfortunately, desafortunadamente, honestly, I was kind of scared. I was scared recently that my accent was going away. Be, uh, my my Dominican was going away. Por la razón por la cual eh, yo no utilizo ta, you know you no lo utilizo. Muchísimo durante el día, ¿me entiende? Casi nunca, porque yo no tengo dominicanos que, que, me, que me rodean, eh, casi nunca hablo con mis amigos que son dominicanos, casi nunca, eh, tampoco, yo no hablo conmigo mismo con un acento dominicano, tampoco. Lo que yo hago es hablar conmigo mismo con un acento más neutral. Porque eso es como eh, es, es la forma que yo comunico con los demás, ¿me entiende? So, like, the way that I usually communicate with people uh, that I meet, porque ahora mismo yo vivo en San Antonio, en San Antonio, Texas, y hay pocos dominicanos que viven acá. Hay más mexicanos, eh, hay más cubanos, sorprendentemente, más cubanos. Quizás tenemos más, más venezolanos que dominicanos también acá. Entonces, so I don't I when I speak with people in Spanish here, which is usually at least like every single week, um man, at least once. I usually don't use like a Dominican accent because I don't I just feel kind of weird using it because I'm still trying to develop it, right? I feel like it's a little uh so un poco extraño para, para utilizar mi, mi acento con, 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 con cada quien, me entiende, con cada persona que Eh, con quien me conecto. Es un poco raro. Because I'm still like developing it. So I don't always feel very confident with the way that I speak. Or I feel like I, I sound weird and stuff like that. So normally when I'm speaking Spanish with people, I just I just speak with a neutral accent. And that's just my environment too. So I mean, there's a lot of Cubans here, a lot of Mexicans here. Um, there's a lot of Colombians here as well. Eh, que más? Mm, not many Spanish people here, though. Como españoles, a pocos acá. Cubanos, yeah, decent amount of Cubanos here. But yeah, normally I just like to speak with like a neutral accent. That's the other difficult part is trying to like speaking. Speaking is one thing. Speaking Spanish is already difficult in itself, right? But then speaking with an accent is very difficult. And then trying to speak with an accent and also including. Eh, to, toda la jerga, toda la jerga de, de RD es aún más difícil para replicar eh, desde mi punto de vista. Pero déjame saber, por favor, let me know in the chat here. Primero que nada, ¿de dónde es usted? ¿De qué país es usted? Además, eh, let me know in the chat where you're from. And also, let me know if you are currently learning a specific dialect of the Spanish language. Y no te olvides, por favor, suscríbeme, suscríbeme, por favor, suscríbete a este canal, por favor. Porque yo quiero aumentar 
eh, la cantidad de, de estudiantes que vean este canal de YouTube, porque yo quiero tener más personas que me vean y que oigan todo, todos los consejos que yo, que yo doy eh, en todos mis videos. Entonces, para mí eso sería bien útil si, si haces eso. Y también, por favor, comparte ese canal con todos tus seres queridos, con tus amigos, eh, con compañeros en el trabajo, con quien sea, de verdad. Also, share, share this channel, please. Share, share videos that you like with your friends. Share videos that you like on, uh, on social media, etc., etc. Then also, for those who are joining, if you didn't know, I am also now selling a Spanish resource kit. Entonces, si necesita recursos para estudiar español o nuevos recursos para estudiar español, quizás este producto es para ti. Tiene más que 60 recursos para estudiar español también. Y no importa tu, no importa tu nivel de español tampoco, porque yo tengo recursos para principiantes, eh, estudiantes intermedios y también estudiantes avanzados. Hay un poco para todos, entonces no te preocupes por eso, ¿me entiende? So check that out, the link, yeah, the, you should be able to click the link in the, the chat there, so definitely check that out. If you don't need res, uh, resources for learning Spanish, si tú no necesitas nada, porque ya hice todo el trabajo arduo para buscar horas y horas. Entonces está bien. Puedes com eh, compartirlo también con, un, con tus amigos. You can also share uh, my Spanish resource kit with your friends as well. If you know anybody who needs some resources, so definitely let people know. I'm trying to get the word out because I just started selling it uh, last week. So, or release it to the public rather. But yeah, that is one big, one big issue that I have. And this year, in general, eh, no he consumido tan, tanto español de RD. Like, for example, I, lo I love Spanish, right? I love to learn Spanish. So the way I learn Spanish is by consuming content from like all, all over the place. So for me, a lot of times, I'm not just listening to Dominican content. So it's not like that. It's not like that. It's never been like that, actually. Ever since I started this journey of trying to learn Dominican Spanish and speak like Dominican, y todo eso, y toda esta medita vaina, eh, I've been all over the place. I learn Spanish just from everywhere. Like, my goal isn't always just, like, to learn Dominican Spanish, but it's just to learn more about the language in general, because I'm a nerd like that. So, like, whoever, whoever I'm speaking to, I try to learn from. No importa eh, de, donde, de donde son, no me importa. Solamente eh, yo tengo ganas de aprender, ¿me entiende? Entonces, like I like to learn everything. So I watch, you know, YouTube videos, listen to music, you know, from all different Spanish, all different types of Spanish speaking countries. It's not really, really just Dominican. So that would help me a lot. So that's my biggest issue. Honestly, that would be probably one of my biggest tips. Like if you want to, si quieres, like if you, if you want to like, uh, like really dive deep into one specific dialect or one accent, It will probably serve you more if you are if you are just you know primarily just searching or not searching. Well, I guess that that too, but primarily listening to content from that specific country. Um, as far as like you know speed wise, like oh yeah, like be able to develop the accent you know faster, be able to you know learn a lot of the vocabulary faster. Because for me, again, like I was saying beforehand, oh hola buenas brownie. Do you use subtitles? I do sometimes. It depends. Like, for example, if I watch a YouTube video, if I don't understand something, I might throw on, on the subtitles. Maybe not, because number one, YouTube subtitles aren't always accurate. <laughs> a lot of times they aren't accurate for many, t uh, many times for the, 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 the channels. They just aren't even activated or they're not available. So there's that aspect. And as far as TV shows and movies, no, because... I haven't even watched a movie this year in Spanish yet, so that's kind of sad. TV shows, I haven't watched many TV shows this year in Spanish either. I don't I don't ever turn on subtitles for those. If any if any subtitles I have, it's going to be for YouTube videos. 
And then I guess like transcript, transcript wise, maybe podcasts. I'll probably, I, yeah, I'll say that for podcasts, for songs, I like to look at the lyrics, but for TV shows and movies, I don't usually go on subtitles. It's just la preferencia para mí. Um, but I'll see, but that's kind of, uh, that'll be my tip. Also, one thing I always like to talk about is should you even, should you even, you know, study a specific dialect, develop a, a specific accent? My answer to that is always, uh, whatever you want to do. And it's not really a yes or no, because it all depends on your language learning goals. But I will say is that you don't have to choose one. Because I know some people may be stressed about that, like, oh, I need to learn a specific uh, a specific dialect of the Spanish language. No, I don't know why we say that for. I think like like I think it's more promoted to maybe to learn Mexican the Mexican dialect if you live in the United States. Like that's what's that's what I hear a lot promoted. But for me, I'm just like, no, do whatever you want to do. Um, like whatever goes with your language learning goals. If you don't have I mean, if you're, you know, a beginner, you probably don't even have that many language learning goals or you don't really know where to start or you don't even know what, what you would even choose. In that case, you kind of just do whatever you want. I mean, you can just, you know, learn the basic, learn the basics of the language. That takes a lot of time in itself before you can, before you really even dive into all like the dialects and the accents and all the slang and, and anyway. So, I mean, that process takes a long time. That's like with me and French. With me in French, I'm nowhere close to being fluent, but I've been I've been learning French for the past year, year and four months now, or four and a half months. Nowhere close to fluent. I still don't have base vocabulary yet, but it's taking this long because I'm learning Spanish, number one. But on top of that, it's just been taking me such a long time. So like for me, for me, for example, with French, to be able to even think about trying to dive into the dialects and like and everything like wouldn't even make any sense right now for me specifically because i don't even know basic french pronunciation i'm not good with my pronunciation there's so many rules i don't know and uh vocabulary in spanish vocabulario see sí, vocabulario and as in in francis eh, vocabulario eh, basico you know tengo tampoco and it's already been a year and four months i still don't like i don't even know what tree is i don't know what grass is i don't know what i don't know what sweatshirt is i don't know what light bulb is like stuff like that i don't know all the colors i don't know all the numbers so things like that it really, it kind of really depends. Basically, that rant was just about you know whether you have to you know choose a specific dialect. I say in the beginning, you have there's really no point of you stressing about that. Again, unless it's a part of your language learning goal. Some people they know from the beginning, hey, I want to learn Mexican Spanish for this 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 reason. My family heritage, girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, you know, etc. Whatever whatever the case may be. But if you don't know, you don't have to choose one. You just start to learn with the basics because the basics already take very long time to learn. And last thing you would really want to stress yourself out. Of, I don't want to say stress yourself out about or stress yourself out. But I would say more of like put more on your plate. That's, that's a better way. I would I would say it. Put more on your plate um, than than necessary. Oh, that's what I forgot. I don't have my. Uh, oh. I don't, you're not able to, if you would like, make any donations because I don't have that setting turned on right now. So let me turn that on. So we can at least have the capability to do so. There we go. I don't know why I didn't have that on. Pero bueno. Even like, uh, yeah, just trying to focus on basic pronunciation and pronounce things somewhat decently is already you know can hurt your brain now think of trying to add a and add an accent onto that then slang and it's a lot so that's why for me it's it's very very difficult to learn dominican spanish and to develop an accent especially when my focus is not on it consistently every single day just like you know learning the basic vocabulary learning basic pronunciation rules um, you know, learning the basic grammar, it takes a lot of consistency. It takes a lot of learning consistently 
until you're able to go oh, in vocabulary, learning vocabulary as well, a lot of consistency before you can even start to remember those things and then start to use them and then start to use them, you know, somewhat uh, proficiently. So like all those things take uh, a long, long period of time. Um, yeah, no, unfortunately, I, un I always underestimate how long things take. Uh, Brownlee, let me know. Do you do you use subtitles? Déjame saber, por favor, eh, si utiliza subtítulos en español. He would have given up on Portuguese. Yeah, I gave up Portuguese a long, that was a long time ago. Only last year though. Last year I gave up on um I gave up gave up on Portuguese because kind of like what I was just referring to beforehand. Way too much. Way too much. As far as language learning goes, learning Spanish, my focus is on Spanish, learning French, my focus is less on French, but I'm still trying to learn it. And then trying to put Portuguese on top of all that. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Me falta la palabra. Eh, Mm, yo, si sí, me va a palabra en, en español también. Pero básicamente yo no tenía la capacidad para hacer todo eso, de verdad. Sin bulto. Too, too much, basically. I was thinking, I mean, already I wasn't doing that well with trying to, like, with uh, balancing French and Spanish. And then my, my whole idea with Portuguese was to, okay. I'm going to learn one word a day. That's really was my plan. I'm just going to learn one one word a day. And do that be easy. And yeah, I could even do that. So like yeah, I'm trying to learn one one or two word words a day. Portuguese, you know, could use Duolingo with with French, try to learn a few words with French. And then, you know, Spanish, I'm doing, you know, all the things, right? You know, thinking, listening to music, and that's what the 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 majority of my time and energy is going to it just was it's too much like for me even just trying to like for me trying to like increase my french vocabulary is difficult to do brain como la 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 capacidad de mi de mi mente por la razón por uh, por la cual requiere mucha energía de verdad oh verdad en verdad verdad requiere mucha energía eh paciencia tiempo dedicación y no tengo mucho de eso me entiende Porque yo hago más que aprender, aprender idiomas en esta vida. Yo trabajo, yo tengo amigos, eh, yo hago ejercicio, yo hago otros, otras cosas. Entonces yo no tengo horas y horas eh, dedicado a aprender los idiomas cada día. No es posible para mí en ese momento de mi vida. Eh, Brownlee says, practice listening skills, what would you suggest? Oh, for listening skills? Hmm. Both, honestly. Both really help. But as far as practicing, if anything, probably with subtitles would probably be the best, honestly. Especially like in the beginning. Um, but over time, right, the more that you are learning new words, you're seeing the words while you are watching like a video or you're watching a TV show, watching a movie, or you are reading the script of a podcast while you're listening, it's going to get easier and easier to comprehend over time, right? Repetición siempre es la clave. And para nosotros estudiantes de idiomas, la repetición es clave. Así funciona eh, el cerebro. Yo no sé por qué, eh, pero eso es la, esto es it's la verdad. A lot of repetition, time, dedication, a lot of hours to not a specific amount of hours. Solamente como en, en general, para no hablar afuera. It's just, it just takes time. Like there's no really, no set time of like when your brain is going to just like start understanding a word. Like how many times you have to hear a word, see a word before you can really start to remember it. I don't know. There's not really, it's going to be different for every single person, right? Like for me, certain words, you know, may be easier for me to remember 
than for other people. Like, but for whatever reason, I think Bocino, which is horn in Spanish, I believe, Bocino was really hard for me to remember. And so was Respaloso. Like, I didn't learn what Respaloso was until two years ago, I think. But I never, I didn't really, really study it. I didn't really use it. And it took, it's taking me like, like these, like two years, even though I was passively not really thinking, or I was very passive with it. I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't using it until like it really got into my mind. And like, if I hear it, I know, like, I know what that word is. So it's like things like that. Arespaloso, that, that was a really, really hard word for me to remember and to say. So was, hmm. So was, otra palabra, otra palabra. Reci, recientemente. También como el tiempo, el tiempo que requiere, el tiempo que es requerido para pronunciar palabras bien. Eso también, yo no sé. Solamente depende how long it takes for you to, to pronounce words properly and such. It really depends. Like for me, same thing. Respaloso. Respaloso. is really hard for me to say. Uh, really hard to practice speaking. Refiger. Ay, otra vez. Ay, mi madre. ¿Qué te pasó con mi, con mi, con mi lengua hoy? Refrigerador. Refrigerador. O la lavera es un poco más fácil para, para pronunciar. Um, so refrigerator, you know what, you know what the issue is actually when I was a kid learning how to say refrigerator in English was really hard. So maybe that's why, but anyway, so refrigerator in Spanish, well, one way of saying it is really easy. La lavera. Or the longer version is la refrigerador. And I remember like the, the first, like the, like the first time I came across that word, I'm like, yeah, I was going to say la lavera. La lavera is más fácil, and like la, la refrigerador is way more difficult to say. So I just didn't even practice that. But I'm just like, well, eventually, after a, you know, a long time, I'm just like, you know what? I actually do need to work on the pronunciation of that word because if you work, if you work on the things, this is how I, I'll say this. This is, um, this is how I like really improved like all my language skills reading, writing, listening, speaking is by doing the hard things, like really pushing myself to do the hard things. Like again, instead of going, instead of uh, just using the, the easy word, uh, la navera, I pushed myself at first. I didn't know at first I was really lazy. I was like, I'm not, I'm not learning that word. And I didn't, I didn't try to pronounce that word. I use a, every time I was having a conversation with someone, I would use la navera. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use, I'm going to go push myself so I can you know, learn how to pronounce refrigerador. So then I kept practicing that over and over again. And then I replicated that same el mismo proceso con otras palabras, la misma vaina, el mismo proceso, la misma estrategia, refrigerador, resbaloso. Eh, ¿Qué fue la otra? Eh, preocupado, preocupación, no te preocupe. Because for some reason, preocupe. Like that word was really hard for me to say. Preocuparse. Because I think you have to like, it's A-O. I think when it has like a lot of combination of vowel sounds, really hard for me to say. So like como preocuparse. Preocuparse. También suscribirse. That hard, that word was pretty hard for me to say as well. Um... But yeah, Brownlee, um, that's what I that's what I suggest. Listening skills. Yeah, so yeah, subtitles for sure. And also not subtitles, because then you have you have to work on like listening to listening to content without without subtitles, which is which is like uh which is what I like to call incomprehensible input. So that's also very helpful. I know some people don't agree with that. I like to listen to a lot, even right now. I listen to a lot of things that that are not comprehensible to me. I always ran about this because I'm not always just focusing on. I kind of went away from the topic of the uh, of this live stream. Actually, no, it's all related. It's all connected. I'll connect everything because it's all important. But um, because I'm focusing on the on how on how like the Spanish speaker is sounding versus just trying to comprehend. And I think sometimes us as Spanish learners, we focus too much sometimes, right, on just like, oh, I need to understand everything they're saying. And that's how I know that I'm improving. 
And that's actually una mentira. Eso no es la verdad. La verdad es que tú puedes aumentar tu, eh, eh, tu, co, co, tu comprensión auditiva eh, sin comprender eh, sin comprender el hispano hablante eh, en el que estás escuchando. That took a long time to think of that sentence. But that's the other hard uh, ha, uh, that's the other hard aspect of right there of trying to learn Dominican Spanish. Because right there, right, I was kind of using just like a neutral accent, right? Learning neutral accent. That was like a very simple sentence, but it took me like so in a little little time, a few seconds to think of what, what I was trying to say. Now, think about that, how difficult that was. Now think about adding out an accent to that. So trying to think of the accent, put the accent onto it, and then also slang. So it's kind of a lot. So that's what's difficult for me. Um, King Buddha says, I like, eh, como? I like free, eh? Free go, I, free go, free go, eh? Free, free go, I don't think I've heard that word before. Let me look it up. Speaking of that, Frigorifico, frigorifico. Today I uploaded my video that is called How to Roll Slash Trill Your R Spanish Pronunciation. So definitely uh, check that out as well. Because what I just said right there, free, free. Se puede escuchar un poquito. Del como del trill, no sé cómo decir en español, como el trill con estas dos, estas dos letras ahí, free, free, porque no, no suena como free, free, porque esto es inglés, pero estamos hablando en español, esto es free, rigorífico. So, I talk a little bit about that, because I dive deep into it, because it's something I learned, I guess, kind of recently, maybe like within the last two years. Um, uh, like the rolling R and like, it's, it's not it's like super difficult, but like, there's more to learn than like what I initially imagined about like learning how to roll your R's. Like I used to think it was as simple as just like, and like, that's it. And it's like, no, there's actually more that you have to do. There's like a few more little things that you, that you need to know when it comes to rolling your R's. But anyway, that's a whole skill in itself. Right. So there's that. So that's a whole skin, uh, skill in itself. And for me, even like a, like a few years ago, I wasn't really rolling my R's either. So that's something that I really have to focus on. Like if you see me thinking, like for a few seconds, or you see me struggling when I'm speaking, it's that's one reason why I'm like I struggle to speak right now is because I'm really trying to make sure that I roll my R's because I don't always I don't always roll my R's. Sometimes, like I have to remind myself to roll my R's. So that's like one thing. Like with many other pronunciation rules, you kind of have to remind yourself. Like if you if you aren't doing them, like for me, like I know my my speech patterns, a lot of my pronunciate my a, a lot of my pronunciation mistakes and challenges. So I have to remind myself. I'm like, no, okay, no, it's it's a o, it's it's not e o, or it's it's pesado, it's not pasado. Like I'm like, oh no, it's e, it's not a, it's e, or it's a, it is not e. Or it's E, and it's not E. Or it's A, and it's not E. So these things I always remind myself of. So these are the things that are on my mind when I'm speaking Spanish all the time. So that's what makes it difficult for me. Um, para hablar con, con un acento. Porque el acento no me, no me sale. No, no, no me sale mi gente. No me sale, no me, no, no me sale muy bien. Oíste. Eh, además, la jerga de RD es muy amplia y todavía no me llega tampoco porque yo no dedico, no, yo no de, yo no dedico, dedico, ¿cómo así? ¿Es dedico o es dedico? Yo creo que es dedico porque suena diferente, ¿verdad? Como eh, donde, donde... Eh, aumenta 
el tono de tu voz, dedico, dedico o dedicó. So it's different, but that. So those are the things that I think about, or that I'm always like trying to figure out if it's like this or that. So that that's what goes around in my head. So todo esa cosita también trying to learn all the la jerga de RD. There's a lot. Um, I wrote a few things down. A lot of times when I'm listening to Dominican content, which hasn't been a lot, um. I don't write things down. So there's a lot of jargon that I don't know. I don't understand because I don't write things down. And if I don't write these things down, I'm going to forget. Like, por ejemplo, suota esto, suota eso. So that's something that I hear a lot now. Eh, I don't know. I mean, bueno, quizá eh, se utilizan esta, esta frase en otros países. Pero yo escuché esa frase en... Eh, en, un, en una serie um, en YouTube, también en un, en, un po, en un podcast, en un podcast en Spotify. Um, déjame ver. Okay, yo tengo unas cuantas frases acá. Yo tengo, se pone freca, se pone freca. Oh, eso, eso, eso es de una canción. So these are some phrases from some songs that are that I recently wrote down. Se pone freca. Tú no sabes que lo que. Tú está loco. Y está to. Then from some podcasts, I got una vaina pacana. Suota esta vaina. Suota es como yo, como, como, um, I don't know. Suota esta vaina, una vaina pacana. What see suata esa vaina suata it's like suata I think that means like like to let it go I mean it's like sota suata means to like to let go uh, from from what I remember so suata esa vaina I actually like that because it's um yo creo que es como otra forma para para decir a alguien no te preocupe como tranqui como tranquilito tranquilo todo está bien suata esa vaina I think so. Guess what? That's the other hard part of learning Dominican Spanish. It's one thing for me to like to hear some, you know, hear a word or a phrase, it's an, it's, or or to read it somewhere, right? But guess what? Now I have to figure out what it means, and then figure out how to use it in context. And then after I learn what it means, I learn how to use it in context. Now I have to learn how to say it properly, right? Because again, it's like three different three different stages. So that's why vocabulary. I always talk about that as well. Like vocabulary can be kind of hard to learn because it's not just like, oh, I learned the definition. I'm good. Yeah, maybe if you're reading, that's good. But if you're communicating with someone, not only do you have to know the definition, you need to know how you need to know how to use it in context. I mean, you can get that from reading. Um, I mean, you can't get that from reading. But for like stuff like this, um, tell me you can. Depends. I don't have any Dominican books. That's the thing too. I don't even have any Dominican books. I don't know if they exist anywhere around here um, that would have like slang. But yeah, that's kind of the hard part. So yeah, learning definitions, learning how to use them in context, and then actually saying them in a sentence. So that's, that's hard for me. So that's hard for me as well. So that's why I, this is why I always like talk about like the copycat method. So for me, como ya mencioné, es muy difícil, o como, como me complica, como producir todas estas frases como de una vez, como del aire, ¿me entiende? Pero si estoy eh, copiando a alguien, es un poco más fácil. Like right now, I can say como su suelta esta vaina because I remember that that um, that host on that podcast saying that. Or I remember on a TV show, on a TV, or like on a YouTube video, I remember, I remember this Dominican woman saying, tu ta freca, tu ta freca. Like I don't have to remember it because I, I just remember or I don't have to like, like produce it on my own if that makes sense, right? So like if, right now I have all these words listed, but I re, I don't really have to review. I don't have to review these these uh, like these phrases on the list. I just remember them a lot more from just listening to content over and over again, and then I copy them. So I, so I do like a lot of shadowing. So around my house, I'm like, okay, como tú estás freca, suelta esa vaina. ¿Qué tú vas? ¿Cómo por qué tú estás acá? ¿Qué tú haces aquí? ¿Por qué tú estás trabajando? 
Suelta mi banda. Como cosas así. That's what I do. Like, I think about, like, throughout the day, I do shadowing. So shadowing is like you're watching a video, right? And then you, like, you repeat things. You're, you're repeating, like, what you hear. I do that throughout the day. So I remind me, or I, I think about a podcast I was listening to. So I'm, let's say I'm not listening to anything at all. So I do a lot of copying. I do a lot of shadowing when I'm not listening to anything. Walking down the street, at the gym, lo que sea. Oite. And then I remember, oh, like what, what did they say in that song? What did they say in that TV show? What did they say in that YouTube video? And then I just try to like, just say it right there. Tu da freca. And I still don't even know what that exactly that means, but I know how to use it slightly in context. But I kind of don't, I don't really know what it means. And so that I'm still trying to learn. Freca, because I've heard that in multiple ways too. I've heard it when a, with the Mickey woman on the, TV, on the on the YouTube video, she sounded kind of angry. But then I've also heard it more in, in like an endearment way. Como, bueno, ya tú sabes que yo, que, que yo soy muy fresca, yo soy una hueva. So I think it's like like new or something like that. But in a bad cognitation, I'm not really sure. But I just remember, yeah, recently in the podcast, she's like, I don't, oh no, a guy that was saying to her, he's like, sí, como, como, sí, como, porque ya sabe que, que, que tú eres muy fresca. Tú no sabes mucho. Acabas de entrar en ese negocio, en esa industria. Como cosas así. Pero bueno. King Buddha says the rule of thumb with pronunciation. Am I on mute? All right, good. Because last time I kept putting myself on mute and I had no idea. I was on mute. Pero anyway. Uh, the rule of thumb with pronunciation is if the word ends with a vowel, the first to the last syllable is stress. So it's pronounced dedico. You know what? I had no idea there was a rule for that. So that's good to know. Uh, frigorifico. Frigorifico is refrigerador. Ah, okay. When a word breaks that pronunciation rule and accent mark is placed to tell you then where to put the stress. Yeah. I think... Yeah, I probably won't remember that. That rule. Pero eso, como que, ¿qué más tenemos aquí? Que yo tengo en mi, en mi lista de frases, de expresiones y vocabulario. Normalito, I don't know exactly what that means. I mean, si yo entiendo como la idea eh, de ese, esta palabra, pero yo no sé cómo utilizarla en, en contexto. 100%. Normalito, normalito. Ah, vete con tu frequeo. Vete con tu frequeo. So I learned that like a few days ago. I don't know what frequeo means. Let me write it down. But I thought I thought it sounded really funny. Like I like Dominican Spanish because it sounds pretty funny. I don't know how it's spelled either. I just remember how it sounded. So there's also that. But in this case, I don't really need to know what it really sounds like. If I asked, if I told my friend, he would probably you know frequeo, frequeo. Frequeo. Vete con tu frequeo. Tú eres una freca. Um, vete con tu, con tu frequeo. Fre, frequeo. 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 Like, I don't know if it's with the Q or if it's with, or if it's with the C. So that, eh? Frequeo. I don't know. Maybe you know. If any of you are studying Dominican Spanish, because I don't know. But that's one thing I heard too. Tu, eh, oh, vete, vete con tu frequeo. So now I'm just going to like say that a lot. Vete con tu frequeo. Suelta eso. Que se pasando de, de su raya. That one, I have no idea what that means. So there's that. Um, de tu raya. Eh, loco, tato, tercha, que más tenemos. Dime, 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 dime a ver. And also one thing, if you haven't noticed, I never go to a grammar book ever. Like, definitely not now. Every If I don't understand, like, most of these sentences or phrases or expressions, when I don't understand a word or a phrase, I just continue to listen to content, um, continue to listen to, like, a song, continue to watch a YouTube video, continue to listen to you know, the podcast or whatever, 
and um, and then try to find that specific word and then write it or yeah, find that specific word and try to figure out like, you know, how they're using it in the sentence. So basically it's like all context. Cause I don't try to think about like, you, it's, can't, it's a lot of things you can't really think about like rules and stuff. So yeah, I don't think about rules like that. Only rules, only rules for me is like word placement. That's the only thing I care about. Word placement. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So like some of these, I'll probably ask my friends. Um, one of my friends, Dominican. Other than that, I will just learn through context. But it's like hearing it over again. And that's kind of that's how I like to learn. Just like trying to figure it out on my own, just by listening over and over again. Because eventually a lot of things you'll understand just by listening over again and trying to figure it out on your own. Listen to how it's used. Again, if you're watching something, that's gonna be like really, really helpful. Because you have facial expressions, you have las manitas también. Porque los dominicanos son muy expresivos también. Si, si tú no sabía, pero ahora tú sabes. So yeah, Dominicans use their hands a lot, or some use their hands a lot. But in general, you can like really a lot of things you don't like. Some things you can just kind of understand by how people are expressing them. Por eso yo doy ese ese consejo de que de escuchar a los sonidos de los hispanohablantes. Por ejemplo, con los tonos, con los acentos, eso es lo que yo hago. I focus on how they sound. Because now I've, I've realized that there are a lot of different, a lot of different sounding Dominicans than I ever would have imagined. I don't know about necessarily accents, but more of just a lot of different tones that Dominicans speak with. Like one, this one sounds really different. So one, I remember, okay, this dude in Capricornio, suena más como, <clears throat> suena más como, eh, como ya tú, eh, no, es como más, más, hasta que eso. Como ya tú sabes, estamos activos allá, eh, estamos activos allá en Avenida 13. So, I've heard like tones like that. And that's kind of hard for me to like speak with. I, I, I'm not going to speak like that all the time. That's exhausting. But anyway, so I've heard tones like that. Then I've heard tones that are more como más tranquilo, más suave, más como más, más bajito así, que, que, que no suena tan, tan alto como eso, tan, tan alta. Porque hay personas que hablan así, because there's people who like, I've heard people who talk like that with that kind of tone. So again, it's like I really focus on how they sound. So a lot, a lot of, or like the re, uh, one big reason why I've been able to pick up those types of tones is because I haven't been able to understand them. <laughs> so again, that's why, uh, that's why I talk about incomprehensible input because for me, Dominican Spanish was incomprehensible for basically two years, or actually longer than that. Even right now, still don't understand a lot of Dominicans, but definitely my. The first time I went there, couldn't understand anybody. Then I tried to watch some Dominican content before I went to my went there for the second time. Still couldn't really understand a lot of people there. And then trying to wa uh, watch more Domin or try to consume more Dominican content. Still couldn't understand anybody, right? I mean, I didn't I didn't really look up anything. I mean, I talked to Dominicans. I would ask them things, but I mean, it's a lot to learn. Like trying to learn a whole do uh, you know a, a dialect that you're not used to at all. There's so many words to learn. So many words. So many expressions. So, yeah, like for me to be able to like replicate some of those tones is because didn't understand what they were saying. So my ears just picked up the way that they <laughs> that the way that they sounded. So it's really interesting. So I like I like uh, I like I, don't know, I like kind of like, kind of imitating accents and stuff. So I wish, yeah, but yeah, I was kind of like that uh, imitate accents. King Buddha says has to be frequeo. Better con tu frequeo. Let's see what made uh freseo. Okay, no sabía eso. Gracias. So yeah, I said I like to I like to play around with different like different different tones because the different tones. Like I, I don't know if it's I don't know how many different accents are in Dominican Republic. I couldn't tell you this person has this accent versus that accent. I mean, it's one part or it's like less than half of an island. Is it because no DR is a little bit bigger than Haiti? I think. Damn it, yeah. Yeah, Eddie Days is a little bit bigger than Haiti. 
Déjame ver en la mapa. Sí, el rédito un poco, un poco más un poco más grande que sí. Oh, bueno. It's like two thirds, like two thirds of the island. Sí, es Haiti, and then yeah, RD definite, def, definitivamente más, más, más grande. Ah, Pico Duarte. So yeah, so that's what that's what I like to do. It's really fun. And right now, like that's what I saw like really one really good benefit of listening to a lot of content. And again, not just it's like for me, I don't always just focus on words. I like to just like have Spanish on in the background. It's just so you can pick up the sound. Like, how does the language sound? And I guess like the, the same thing with now with, with me with French. I've done the same exact thing with French. I'm again, I'm, I can't really speak that many sentences in French, but now I'm starting to kind of understand more just like how how it sounds. How do people sound? How do people sound? Like what? Yeah, like the tone of their voices, the tones of the voice, accents and such. So it's really interesting. But it's like it's all different. It's like a different layer of, of learning Spanish. It's very different from just reading, reading only, focusing on just like like uh, translating, trying to figure out what these words mean. Um, just studying flashcards, just re repeating TV shows over and over again, and just trying to understand. So it's that's what I like it too. It's for me. It's like it's a little bit less, a little bit less stressful now. I like the way I study. Because now I don't, I don't always focus too much on, like on on the words all the time. Depends. Again, like sometimes, yeah. Like if I'm listening to something, I want to like take some notes or whatnot. I want to like figure out. I want to write down some of these some of these words and phrases that they're saying. So what that's how I know. Tú estás freca. Porque tú estás acá. Dime a ver que no que guau guau guau. Como cosas así. Eh, ¿y qué más? Otra frase. Otra frase también. ¿Qué sé yo? ¿Qué sé yo? Dicen eso a veces. There's also this one uh, Dominican, guy, with Dominican guy I watched on YouTube. Uh, Ahora mismo vive en uh, Nueva York. I don't know if I, could, okay, if I could do his accent. But his is like... <clears throat> it's like really low. How do I do it? Uh, how does he sound? Uh... Mira mi gente, eh, ahora mismo, a muchos inmigrantes de, Ven de Venezuela que están emigrando acá a Nueva York. Pero déjame decirte que hace mucho que lo vemos acá, de verdad. Pero no solamente los venezolanos, pero todos los latinos que viven acá. <coughs> so he kind of sounds like that. It's like very, like a little bit more rough. Uh, tone is a little bit lower, but but I swear I see. It kind of sounds like that. So now it's kind of cool to be able to, to kind of be at this like kind of this level where I'm at right now. I'm able to pick up more like the the different these different accents and such and how Dominican speak. Because before I you know, I couldn't really. I was just kind of stressed out that I couldn't understand any word that they were saying. So it's really really fun. It's really cool. There, and then of course, Las, mu Las Mujeres. Mi amor, ¿por qué tú estás acá? ¿Por qué? ¿Qué tú haces? Déjame, Pex, cuéntame la banda. And like that kind of stuff. So I don't like, like imitating people. I don't know why, but it's just, it's funny because people talk in a really unique way. I'll say that. Pero bueno, um, let me know in the chat here. If there is any specific dialect that you are learning, any specific dialect of the Spanish language. But yeah, that those are some challenging things. Like for me to be able to like kind of like try to imitate those accents, like I can't really do it for like a very long period of time. Like the same thing again, just speaking Spanish already is hard. Trying to maintain a neutral accent for me is difficult. Thinking of what I want to say, trying to remember to roll my R's. And then they get trying to add on an accent onto that. It's just so difficult. That's why like, I get only like I don't like like again throughout the day. I'm not using like a Dominican accent all day long. I don't focus on Dominican accent actually most of the time. So I actually have not been trying to strive for that goal this year really. But now actually like the past few weeks, I've been focusing a lot more just like on listening to Dominican um, content, listening to Dimbo a little bit because now I actually really want to focus more on it. And but it's it's it requires again, it's tiring, it's tiring, it's tiring, it's tiring. 
it's tiring because again, it's just an added layer. I got to think about, okay, I can't, it's not, I don't have to just like think about, you know, try to tell a story in Spanish, express myself in Spanish, tell a joke in Spanish. And I also have to think about trying to say this with an accent and then throughout the whole conversation, maintain the accent. That's hard to do. At least for me, it is like with those tones specifically, because I'm, I'm not going to talk with some of those tones like all day long. <laughs> It'll be funny. It'll be fun if I was around Dominicans all the time. But it's just it's different if I'm not speaking with a Dominican. If I'm not speaking with a Dominican, then I, I just like speak differently. You know, it's just come out. No, I, see, uh, I see yes. I see that I read. With different people, I speak differently. So so you, normally I'm not around Dominican. So I'm not really thinking about, you know, like unless I'm like listening to, to a podcast from DR. Or I'm I'm not on mute. All right, good. You're not just staring at me, not and without the sound. Anyway, eh, okay, okay, I'm Yeah, so I'm not usually like focused on like, oh yeah, I mean, like you know, Dominican blah blah blah. Think of the Dominican accent. Um, yeah, I it just it's just strange. It's really strange. I don't really use it. Like, I'm not really, like, again, a lot of times when I speak in Spanish with people where I live in my city, in San Antonio, eh, like, I'm just focused on communicating. So I'm not thinking about, like, oh, accent, accent, accent. Although my neutral accent kind of sounds a little bit more Dominican, but it's, like, very, very subtle. But, like, some people can be like, oh, like, where are you from? Like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, Dominicano. I'm like, no, 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 no. I just, like, talk to a lot of Dominicans, and I love DR. That's why I sound like this. <laughs> But I'm waiting. Um, and it, it puts like I elongate like the words, you know. Como estoy tranquilo, como ya tú sabes, estoy bien, no malito, todo está bien. Necesito relajarme. And like if someone talks like that, you can kind of come on de una vez, como ya, como ya sabe, como se te nota de dónde es esta persona, me entiende por su por su forma de hablar. Because a lot of a lot of I mean a lot of accents, dialects in Spanish in general are very unique. I mean, like a Spanish person, like I'm pretty sure you can pick out the 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 theo. la canción, la canción, la canción, eh, canción, sí. Yeah, okay, I think I think of sentences. I, I don't know. It's kind of hard. I think of sent sentences on the spot. But anyway, Rafael. Econ says, I'm learning Dominican Spanish. Dominican because it's hard, so it feels like the best route. Explícame un poco más, por favor. Explícame un poquito más de que habla eh, acerca de este camino más duro. And I, I just got reminded of another, of another word. How, what was it? Ah, I just had it in my mind. Ah, hablador. Hablador is like... Um, Again, there's another word I don't really know the meaning of. I just know how, like, when to use it. Again, it sounds really weird, but I kind of learn things kind of backwards. Like, I, I hear things and then I just start using them without really knowing the full context. Depending on who you're talking to, not always the best thing. So I'm very careful with with the words that I use around certain people, of course, like new people I meet. Um, but see, um, that one too, hablador. I think that one just like, like in English, I would be, it would be like, I get como alguien está hablando afuera, like, like someone's like bullshitting, like that kind of thing. Like you're speaking como afuera. Like, why are you speaking like that for? Hablador. That's how I understand it. It's just you know, like you're bullshitting, that kind of thing. Uh, sin bulto. Sin, sin bulto. Sin bulto. That word, that phrase, I think it means like no cap as well. Oh, sorry, not the same thing as hablador. Hablador eh, es como una identificación. Es como una, una acción que alguien está haciendo. O bueno, una, eh, una respuesta a lo que alguien está diciendo en, en un momento. ¿Qué dijiste? Hablador. It's like that. You hear someone say something, you're like, hablador. I don't know. I couldn't tell you exactly what that means. But again, I just I learned things, I learned things through context, body language. Kind of know somewhat what what things mean. But that's what I learned a lot 
throughout my years learning Spanish. A lot of things is not about being perfect. It's not about perfect grammar. It's about communicating how people communicate and just like communicating like the best that you can. So yeah, like not being perfect. Like, oh, I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure if I'm like using this correctly. If I'm saying this right, this sentence properly, but like I kind of know how to use it. Let me try to use it. And asking people, of course, too. Hablando con la gente. Siempre hablando con la gente para aprender un poquito más. Eh, King Buda says, Infitra, eh? Infitris, eh? A Anfitrion, host. That one's hard, too. Anfitrion, de dónde eres y cuánto años tiene? Ay, yo. Eh, eh, esta pregunta es para mí. Que no, que. Also, that's what I learned. I learned, I learned that as well. Que no, que. Que no, que. Que no, que. Wah, wah, wah. I don't know what the wah, wah, wah means. It's just slang. That's slang. Que no, que is slang. But que no, que. Wah, wah, wah. That means it's slang. I don't know what the wah, wah, wah means. But I know a lot of Dominicans use that. Or some Dominicans use that. Que no, que. Wah, wah, wah. Um, what was I saying? Oh, it, it can be used like in, in different parts of the sentence. So a lot of times you may hear like, oh yeah, quiero que means like, what's up? It doesn't mean just like, what's up? Like at the beginning of a sentence, but you can use it como, como, como cuando sea, como cuando, como, como cuando quiera, que lo que. Like you can say it like that, like at the end of the sentence. Don't know exactly the context of that. But again, I just know how to somewhat use it in context because I, I've heard it over and over again. So my copycat method, I just copy what people do. And what copy what people say, que lo que. Or my friend, like you said, like they be like, que lo que. So in that case, it's not like a que lo que, como que lo que, como tu ta. It's not like like it's not like a hey, what's up. Just like, like uh, I don't know, I don't even know how they say it. Pro like how to translate that into English. It's just like I don't know. Oh, here's the one. So in a song, uh, I I was listening to or like today, yesterday. The the artist says, Tu no sabe. He said, Tu no sabe que lo que. Tu no sabe que lo que. You don't know que lo que. So it's not a like it's not just like a un saludo que lo que. So that's a saludo, but pero como tiene otros con eh, otros usos también. So it has it has different uses as well. So that's really interesting. I like that. I like that too. You can use it like a lot. Um, so in a sentence, you may hear it multiple times. And not just like uh, when like people are meeting each other. Pero cuando sea, como, como ya mencioné. Que lo que. Eh, King Buddha says, ¿De dónde eres? ¿Cuántos años tienes? ¿Y a qué, qué, oh, y a qué te dedicas? Sura pachata. Eh, yo, yo soy de acá. Yo soy de Teja. Eh, Y también yo tengo veinte y pico años. Veinte años y un, unos centavos. Yo soy muy viejo. O oh, joven, joven. Soy muy, soy muy joven. Um, ok, déjame ver. Ah, eso. Por favor. Si no sabes aún, if you don't know yet, I have a Spanish resource kit that I am now selling. So check out the link in the chat here. That will take you to... Ay, mi madre. ¿Por qué tú estás acá? Vete. Vete, por favor. Vete. A un montón de insectos de mi casita. Insects. Or that's a fruit fly. I don't know how to say it in Spanish either. So, yeah. Or a gnat. One of the two. Anyway. Um, see, Spanish resource kit for so kit for learning Spanish. A lot of different resources in here. So videos, like for me, videos, like videos are really good. I put a lot of content on Instagram, Spanish content on Instagram, my Twitter and such, my my newsletter as well. This is just another way that I can supply resources for uh, resources for you. Uh, other ways to to learn Spanish because in this resource kit there's over 60 different resources for learning Spanish like TV shows, podcasts, 
and movies, songs, TV shows, language learning applications that you can use to learn Spanish. These are ones that I've learned or that I've uh, come across that I've used over the past four years. So I want to put all those resources that I've come across over the past few years here in one uh, PDF that you can buy. So you can check out everything that's included uh, in this kit at the link in the chat. You should be able to, there should be a hyperlink or it should be a hyperlink. So you should be able to click on it um, if you're looking for some resources. So no importa el, el nivel que tenga ahora mismo, tu nivel de español, because there are resources for beginners, intermediate learners, and native uh, native learners, or excuse me, advanced Spanish speakers or advanced Spanish learners as well. Because for like for example, for some of the YouTube channels, YouTube channels that I have on there, there are Spanish teachers that teach right. They'll teach you know beginner videos for free beginners, uh, videos for intermediate, and videos for advanced learners. So that's kind of the really good thing about YouTube. YouTube channels, YouTube videos, a lot of teachers, you know, they may, some may have like special specializations, like, okay, like Butterfly Spanish. She's one of the YouTubers that are, uh, one of the YouTubers that is in this kit. She's actually like one of, probably one of my favorite Spanish teachers on YouTube for beginner learners because of her way of teaching. Um, like her, she, you know, she specifically makes content for beginner Spanish learners, but there's others, right? that are teaching or that are that that don't speak english they're only speaking spanish in their in on their youtube or in their youtube videos so only speaking spanish and they're more designed for advanced you know, intermediate and advanced spanish learners but then also apart just from having you know those types of youtube channels that are dedicated for spanish learners i also have content that is created for native spanish speakers so that's why i talk about that a lot like I was before, and I was talking about incomprehensible input, um, because I, I listen to a lot of that. So I listen to a lot of native content. So by native content, when I say native content, that just means a Spanish speaker has created this podcast, has created this YouTube channel, has created this TV show, and it was created. The target audience is native speakers. So that's what I mean by native content created by native Spanish speakers for native Spanish speakers. This type of content, joyas, joyas y oro. So always recommend listening to, you know, both, depending on, you know, whatever your, your level may be. But yeah, this resource has has both. So it has content for, for you know, beginner, intermediate. Then, of course, if, if you're more on the intermediate side, you're more on the, the advanced uh, Spanish learner side then you have plenty of native content that is in this kit as well. So definitely, you know, check that out. Click on, uh, click, click the link so you can see what's in it. See the price and all that. So it's $10, I'll tell you right now. $10 PDF. So that's available for you uh, if you would like uh, to purchase. If you don't need any resources uh, to learn Spanish, you don't, you don't need any of these resources because you already have your own list of resources. Definitely send this link to your friends, please, because I'm trying to uh, let everybody know. So I'm trying to get the word out, you know, share it on uh, social media. Uh, yeah, share it on your social media, uh, share it with your friends. And yeah, please check it out. Uh, so that's on my website there, SpanishBlueprints.com. So that's available now. Hopefully in the future, well, I do plan on making some more products. Because again, I like to give as many resources as possible. So yes, hope, that hopefully um, I'll be able to make some more products for all y'all. This is my the first one I've ever made eh, en la vida, de verdad. La, el, primer, el primer producto de este canal de YouTube y también en mi propio, en mi propia vida. Y ojalá que en el futuro eh, venderé aún más productos. So hopefully in the future I'll definitely uh, sell some more. This is just the first one. Hopefully out of many. Um, yeah, if you didn't know, this channel is... This YouTube channel, Spanish Blueprints, it's only two years old. So this YouTube channel is still a baby. So there is plenty of more resources um, that are com that is coming your way, of course. I have plenty of YouTube videos. Let me see how many I have. Plenty of free YouTube videos. You can join my newsletter as well. 
my newsletter. So I give a lot of content throughout my news, uh, my newsletters every, uh, every single week. A lot of tips. Follow me on Instagram. I share how I learn Spanish, like my daily, uh, kind of my my daily Spanish routine. So I share that, and also like kind of behind the camera things on Instagram, Twitter. I like to post on there as well and rant about just like my language learning struggles. So I'm pretty active on Instagram and also Twitter, and then my newsletter as well. Oh, I should put that in here because I also have a free resource which is called the Spanish Conversation Blueprint. Maybe you heard me talk about it. If not, that one is free. So that one's a PDF with five tips for uh, to help you improve your conversation skills, your speaking skills. So that's also a PDF, but this one is free. And once you do, or oh, you get the, you will subscribe to my email list. And then once you subscribe to the email list, you just receive uh, the PDF, a download. And I'll put I'll put the link in here as well. So yeah, this link here is for the Spanish conversation blueprint. So I just put that in the chat as well. So that one's free. So I'll give some tips for there. Then also you also receive some some additional uh, news, so additional emails with even more tips. So I like, I'm all about tips and giving advice. So I love to do it. So that one's free. You receive some free tips as well. So definitely check that out. Um, oh yeah, how many videos do I have so far? So two years. Five months, we have 269 videos. So those are regular videos. And of course, I have some shorts. And then now this is what? Numero 68 live streams of the Spanish Nerd live streams. So there's plenty of content for you. So yeah, it's a lot. So hopefully it's very helpful for you. Of course, um, I'm very new at YouTube and making videos and such like that. So very new. Um, trying to learn how to do it, kind of difficult, I suppose. So everything new for me. Trying to make content the best of my abilities. So all your support is really helpful. Like for example, giving donations, becoming members of the YouTube channel, which is all linked down below in the and all the descriptions of the videos. Yeah, donating in this case, um, getting your Spanish conversation blueprint so you can be a part of the the newsletters. And then also now with the new product, with the Spanish resource kit, buying that as well and sharing that with your friends, or at least like sharing the link with your friends, telling your friends about it, is also very helpful. I mean, then como a fin de día, lo que lo que más quiero hacer con ese canal de YouTube, mi meta, mi gran meta para ese canal es para alcanzarlo, para alcanzar más gente, más estudiantes para que se puede recibir mis consejos. Porque yo, yo, yo tengo entendido que eh, la vida de un estudiante de español no es muy fácil. Y por eso yo tengo ese canal. Para quitar las barreras que enfrentan los estudiantes. Eso es lo que me apasiona en esta vida. So, that is what well, probably like one of my, my biggest motivations for this channel is to help all of you with all of your language or as many as I can. Language learning challenges, learning Spanish challenges. That's why I talk about my challenges. That's why I talk, I talk about like the insecurities that I've had. That's why I talk about the obstacles that I've had to face and uh, attempt to overcome and still trying to overcome. So that's what this channel is all about. Se dedica a mi experiencia aprendiendo español. En puto. Ok. Um, Rafael, no puto. Que lo que. Me que. Oh, that's English, right? Me care. Oh. Me, my, my. Me care. Ciro says, hey, hola, buenas. Bienvenido. Thank you very much for coming. ¿Cómo está? Then I also have otro, otro, uh, otro video saliendo mañana. Um, ahora mismo ya estoy, o oh, ya está dis disponible para, la, uh, para los miembros de este canal. Porque es uno de eh, los varios beneficios de ser un miembro de este canal de YouTube. So, if you're a member of this YouTube channel, 
you can watch one of the early access videos, which is one of the perks of being a member of this channel. So channel memberships, that is also linked down below. So that's one of the perks, one of the benefits of uh, being a channel member. You get early access videos. So this one will be probably released in the next day or so uh, for the public. But there's also a good way to support the channel as well. But this, this video is really fun to make. This one is called, If I Can't Speak Spanish, Should I Listen More? So I'm not going to talk about it in this live stream, but that video is, is next. And then if you haven't watched it yet, the video, I get possible. The video of today, I yes or no. The video of today is the que, the que salió esta mañana is how to roll slash trill your R, your R, Spanish pronunciation. So that is the video that I published this morning and is available now to watch if you haven't watched it. So go check that out. If you would like to learn how to roll your R's or if you need like a refresher, I'll talk about that. Chequealo. De una vez. Oh, bueno, después de este video en directo. Y que lo que. So yes, back to some, back to some challenges. Okay, ya alcanzamos una hora. So you're, we're already one hour and 16 minutes into this live stream. So this one won't be as long as the other ones. Like the other ones I've had for three hours, three hours and 15 minutes, three hours and 20 minutes. Uh, this one probably won't make it that far. So let's see. Ah, another challenge that I have is I really want to be thinking in the accent. You ever thought about that before? Thinking in the accent that you are trying to develop. That's also very hard. That one's that one's kind of weird. So like right now, I'm trying to think in a Dominican accent. Let me see. That one is how do I explain? That one's kind of hard to explain. But, um, mm, ¿Qué te digo? ¿Cómo te explico? It's like uh, like if I try to think with a Dominican accent, it's like a it's more, it's more like I just hear like the voices that I've heard in podcasts and TV shows and songs and stuff like that. That's kind of more with like thinking with an accent, basically. It's more just like I hear kind of like uh, I hear voices. Yo escucho mu muchas voces en mi cabeza. Um, but no, it's more like yeah, I kind of just yeah, kind of just like trying to think with it, trying to think with the accent. It's like. Trying to, it's like re reminding myself of how it sounds, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard. That was kind of hard. I'll skip over that one. But yeah, thinking with an accent. I don't know if you've heard that before. Um, reading with an accent. I haven't been reading that much in general. Pero this one's kind of tiring as well. I'd rather just try to like, como, como hablar eh, libremente con un acento sin leer. Pero si estuviera leyendo, suena un poquito más, un poco más diferente. Menos neutral y más como porque la matate dijo Julia eh, a dominarla cara que no la mate en el sentido literal de la palabra en aquel suen oh, primero que nada mira ese tipo se llama 1984 quizá ha leído en tu escuela para mí me aburre demasiado pero solamente he llegado a la mitad de este libro. Entonces, llevo casi cuatro meses, casi cinco meses con, eh, leyendo este libro. Y ya se hizo para cambiar el libro para, para otro. Pero sería un poco, eh, algo como, como eso. Leyendo, pero con el, el acento en que, está, en que tú estás enfocado. El acento, el flow, el ritmo, el tono, lo que tú quieras. En aquel sueño, tuvo la postrera visión de su madre. Al despertar, se le ocuparon en la memoria las añoranzas de cierto episodio de familiar. Eso también es lo, es lo que me complica leer con un acento porque hay varias palabras que están frente de mí que yo no conozco. Entonces, 
yo tengo que repetir las mismas frases o las mismas frases, las mismas frases y palabras un montón de veces. Entonces, como interrum in interrumpe mi flow. So, if I'm trying to read with that accent, it kind of makes it a little bit hard too, because if I'm reading, right, there's a lot of words in this book that I don't know. So it's it's difficult. Like if I'm just trying to like come on, like think and then try to say like random sentences, um, I got my own. Like speak to myself in Spanish with an accent, it's gonna be a little bit easier, in the sense that like I can kind of um, with the flow will be easier. But like if I read, like I don't have to think of the of my own words. I don't think of the own sentences. But at the same time, this is not necessarily Dominican Spanish. So that's kind of the hard part. But I, I mean, at the very least, it's like another way that you can practice, right? You can practice an accent. At least like the flow. Eh, de la fecha no se acordaba bien, pero no podía tener entonces más de 10 años o acaso 12. Su padre había des desaparecido un unos años antes. Cuando no sabría presa eh, precisarlas con más acentuados relieves, recordaba el tubelante, el tubelento y agitado ambiente de la época, las reiteradas escenas de pánico con motivo de las incursiones, haría oh, áreas las carreras para carecerse en las estaciones de metro, las montañas de escombros por doquier. I don't know what. These are a lot of, a lot of strange words. I don't know. So. That's another way um, that, I, that you can do it as well. I personally just, ugh, it just takes a lot of energy to do that. I'd rather just read and try to get it read fast because that book is boring. But anyway, um, you, you, don't, you usually don't do that too often. Sometimes, but rarely. So yeah, not using the accent often enough. Again, that's a challenge to use the accent all day. And it came out. Eh... You know, the Dominican content, more of that. This year, I've been listening to, to all of the Dominican content, but now I'm trying to listen to more. It was like aggressive. Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. One of my goals was uh, for this year was to sound so Dominican that that it, that no one could mistake me for not being uh, from the, from RD. Pero. Me equivoqué con esto eh, porque eso no sería posible. Porque, porque el tiempo, el tiempo, mi ambiente, un poco de todo. No me deja. Maybe if I was living in the yard for like a whole year, then more than, then I could, yeah, then probably. I would really develop an act like a really a fairly thick accent. Be around it, be surrounded by by Dominican Spanish all the time. Talking to a lot more Dominicans, it would be a lot easier to adapt. Probably my accent and I'll learn learn a lot more jargon. Be able to speak more like them. Come always around them. I'm I'm hearing the accents all the time. I'm hearing how they speak a lot more than what I am right now because right now I'm not around Dominicans all the time. Um, probably be a little bit easier. But yeah, that goal, safe way, safe way. Um, let's see. Yeah, like every day I'm not thinking, really thinking about like talking with an accent. I still have before and I usually speak with a more neutral accent. Because it's, yeah, it's exhausting to speak with an accent in general. It's hard to switch my mind a lot of times from speaking from neutral to like to like the Dominican. Because, again, the people I talk to, I speak to a lot of Mexicans, a lot of Colombians. I don't say a lot. Some Colombians. Mostly Mexicans here. And some of the uh, Cubanos. I mostly just speak with, like, a more neutral accent. That's just kind of what I do. So it's kind of hard to make a switch just, like, from that to, like, Dominican. Um, but normally if I don't, I'm not, it's como si no me rodea muchos dominicanos, <clears throat> then more than likely I'm not going to be like using like a like really trying to like use like a thick Dominican accent like probably con un poquito pero no no está fuerte no está fuerte solamente un ching 
But if I really want to develop it, then I would need to use it all the time and make sure it's not fuerte and not be embarrassed about it. But like, yeah. But the, that's the thing too. Like if I'm if I'm speaking with a Dominican with a Dominican accent, like the way that I, like I really want to, then I'm gonna be yelling. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be yelling. Um, okay, yeah. If you get if you if you're like some Dominicans, in a nice you know having a nice fun conversation, and and I will aumento un poquito, solamente un poquito, un ching. Es un poco más alto. Pero bueno. Eh, it's exhausting. Yeah, I said that. Neutral accent. Slang. Yeah, I see a lot of slang. Don't know that much. My notes is organized. Yeah, I don't take that many notes. Uh, I need to take a lot more notes. I, usually, I just listen. Yeah, plus I do a lot of things in English uh, in my life. Because I don't have a job in Spanish. My job is in English. My full-time job is in English. So that can be hard. So most of the day, <clears throat> not even focus that much on like really trying to like learn Spanish or anything like that. I might have something in the background sometimes, but most of the time, or throughout the, or every single day, cada día en el trabajo estoy comunicando en inglés. Yo no hablo español casi nunca. A veces, eh, tampoco mi mente no está enfocado en el idioma. Eh, no está, enfoca, no está enfocada tanto en RD. Y todo que tiene que ver con RD. So that's a challenge as well. So switching, number one, from English to Spanish is difficult. Doing things in English, you know, like mostly all day at work. Then getting to Spanish mode, that's going to be difficult. So, yeah. But, yeah, so. I'll say like what my plan would be though. Well, let's see. I want to see if I can. Uh... Let's see, find this song. Cause now um, I probably listen to the yeah. This year I listened to more Dimbo than I ever have in my life. So Dimbo. Is think of it almost just like rap, pero en el rey. La canción. Se la choca, se la choca. Si ella quiere darle la choca. La choca, la choca. I like Dimbo because Dimbo is like straight slang. It's hilarious. Dimbo is just straight slang. Uh, do encontré? ¿Cómo se llama? Eh, eso no. Cacada. Champi. Ok, no hay letras con esa canción. Eh, déjame ver. Es bastante rápido también. Eso es Dembo, de RD. Eso es, eso es Dembo. Um, let me find that song. And I'll see if I can try to follow it. So that's one thing I want to do too, to improve my flow, is to kind of come on, copy the flow de, de Dembo. Because it's just, that will really help me to kind of Nail down the flow. By flow, I mean like the rhythm, the rhythm, the pacing of Dominican speech. Because Dominican speech is so, so unique. It's so, eh, tiene mucha sazón. Mucha sazón. A veces muy rápido, pero también es un, muy lento. Pero depende de la persona. Obviamente. So. I really focus on that as well. Again, listening to mirror like what's the kind of say beforehand, just like how it sounds, the flow of it. Not always just the words, but like how do they say these things? Because it's very because all these Spanish speaking countries, they have different ways of of saying words and phrases, right? 
sentences in general. So that's why it's hard as well for me. Because again, trying to adapt myself to a flow, to a whole uh, you know, different way of speaking is is, a, is difficult. It's a different way, different. Like recently I went to Colombia this year, and in Colombia, hablan in in, in, in una forma muy distinto también. I can't really replicate uh, a Colombian accent because again, I don't, have, I don't have much time with it at all. But I remember, like some of the guys would be like, "Gracias," like with that like, with a word. I can't say a sentence with an accent at all. But like that sounds very different from like "RD." Gracias. Ah, I love the Colombian accent. It's really cool. People have always told me like, "Oh yeah, the like the Colombian accent is like really awesome. I love it." I never really got it until I went this year. I actually like heard Colombians. I was like, "Okay, now I know what you're talking about." Because people here definitely sound very unique as well. Um, but yeah, let me see. What's the song at? Donde tu ta? Una cita. Eh, no, esto otra canción. Esto es una salsa. Eh, que la choque, que la choque. Esto es Rochi, Rachi. Dan la vuelta por la bloque. Ay, mi madre. Oh, then I want you to hear like this one song. It has like a really fast part too. This actually, this is another song that's faster than this one. Dime la luz. I don't know if you hear it. I don't know what that even is supposed to mean. Oh, I know what that means. Eh, it says de por aquí. I think it's supposed to say like está aquí o está por aquí, pero está dando vuelta por el bloque. Da, como está dando vuelta, está dando vuelta. Oh, that's something I forgot to mention. So when it comes to learning Dominican Spanish too, I like to call it. I have to learn. I have to adopt a whole new like structure of grammar. But this in particular is kind of like a like an off kind of thing. Because Dimbo, again, this is like straight slang. So this is not like how every Dominican speaks. But regardless, again, still trying to learn just, you know, like let's say, um, I say like the majority of like Dominicans, again, like they're, the way they speak is different, their flow, the, their, their sentence structure is different as well. So that's like was difficult for me as well, which is why I consume a lot of content. So like, again, so I can understand how do they use words? How do they use expressions? The way that they use expressions, the way they use words is not going to be the same as they do in other countries. The way that they speak, the tone of their voice, their, maybe even their, their facial expressions, their, their hand gestures, not going to be the same as in other Spanish speaking countries. So that's kind of, again, what I focus on. But I mean, you're so un poco loco. Hey, Adventures of Ashley Bay. Hola, buena. Bienvenido. Eh, dice que me gusta República Dominicana, especialmente la ciudad colonial. Es muy hermoso y rico. Tiene sentido. Estoy de acuerdo contigo. Definitivamente. Está chévere. Sí, yo, yo he ido a... Bueno, me alojé en, en, en Santo Domingo y también, también en Samaná. Y, y usted... Aventura de Ashley. ¿Dónde ya, dónde ya, dónde ya has estado? En RD. Pero regresando al tema de, de la gramática, la gramática es diferente, básicamente. It's just uh, like, what, again, when I went there, the way, the way they, they spoke, I didn't understand, number one, because I didn't know anything about Dominican Spanish first time I were there. But again, my, 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 uh, uh, mi fundación. Mi fundación de español viene de qué? Oh, viene de dónde? Viene de la escuela. 
So like the foundation of my Spanish comes from school. So grammar, like drilling grammar exercises, you wrote that wrong, you know, five points off, that kind of thing, right? So I came from all that like structured, very, you know, structured grammar. But again, if you want to learn, you know, like a specific, I mean, I don't say even specific dialect, but just like real Spanish from any Spanish speaking country, you really break away from all that grammar. Like the grammar is really good to learn the like the basic sentence structure so you can communicate. Like I would say, like, you know, grammar is really good for, you know, up to a certain point. Um, like you can like just with basic grammar is it's gonna help you be like, you know, become become fluent in Spanish for sure. Like for me, that's my opinion. Because you're gonna be learning just you know sentence structure, you need sentence structure to understand how to communicate, right? You need verbs, uh, like the subject or the noun, whatever the case may be. I don't really know. But you need a sentence, subject, verb, something else, sentence, verb, subject, yeah, subject, the subject, verb. Now, Samuel Ovidio. I'm not a teacher, as you can see. Um, what was I saying? But yeah, like I mean, yeah, grammar's really good for that stuff. But to a certain point, because natives don't speak with you know proper grammar. E, además, um, there's there's so much more Spanish that's outside of grammar textbooks, which everybody needs to understand. <laughs> It's 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 hard to understand because there's already so much that you have to learn. Like I was saying beforehand, like with me, I've been learning French for like a two or yeah, two years now and four months. I'm nowhere close to, to fluent. Nowhere close to fluent. There's so much basic, just the basic foundation French that I have to learn before I can even really even have conversation. I can't even have a conversation for 20 minutes in French, really, sadly. Because I still don't, I'm missing a lot of vocabulary, sentence structure. I don't know how to make a lot of complete sentences besides the ones I learned in Duolingo and like memorize. But I'll see. Um, Adventist of Ashley uh, says, Actualmente estoy aprendiendo, aprendiendo español ahora, ahora. Ah, yeah. Okay, que chulo. Ah, fui a Santo Domingo. Okay. ¿Y qué le pareció? I totally agree. Yeah, I love, I love it. It's muy divertido, verdad? Wait, it's just so it's so different. It's very, very different. Like once you get out of the books and you start to you know dive into native content, which is why I always talk about native content. I always talk about even if you're a beginner, listen to native content so you can understand how it sounds. Doesn't matter if you can't comprehend. That's not the point. The point is that your ears kind of get adjusted to how native uh, native sound. And so you can just, just start to listen to, you know, regular Spanish people uh, or not, or to native Spanish speakers and not just like, you know, study vocabulary, grammar, <clears throat> read and stuff like that. Also, it's really helpful. But then also, you know, listen to like native content and not just teachers as well. Even if you're a complete beginner, you don't know anything. Or rather, you are still learning all the basics because it's very, very important that you get exposure, in my opinion. Because for me, like the whole point of learning a language is so you can communicate. With native speakers, that's my whole kind of like my whole reference, uh, or perspective rather for a language learning. So, be able to communicate with natives, be able to go to a Spanish speaking country and not use English or your native language, and be able to be able to communicate. You can do that, in my opinion, like without having to learn. You don't you don't need to like know a specific dialect, or you know study accents or any of that stuff. To be able to do that, you be able. To, all you have to do is just learn a lot of vocabulary, learn sentence structure, so you know how to, you know, word, word though, uh, word, word, or where to place all the vocabulary. Once you have that, learn how to connect sentences, learn how to pronounce things, simple phrases. I mean, then yeah, that that takes you very far, and and to learn all those things with different topics. Um, a little bit about health. How to express yourself, time, weather, food, um, saludos, despedidos. I don't say those in English at the moment. Um, body parts, colors, final, finito. Adventures of Ashley B says, 
It's really interesting. They're really surprised that I know enough to get by. Oh, que chévere. Y cuando empezó a aprender español, Ashley? ¿Cuándo? ¿Cuándo fue? Oh, I mean, it's song again. Que ella no está de por aquí y está dando vueltas por el bloque. Si hace lo que ella dice, no quiere salir de bloque. En la tarde y en mañana y esperando de la noche. Mami, tú estás linda, pues si hoy no hoy. Ah, mami, tí, mami, tú estás linda. Tú estás, tú estás linda. Tú estás linda es tú estás, pero tú estás en RD, porque, porque le gusta allá con la S a fin de una palabra. Tú da, tú da linda, pues si hoy no, te lo han dicho. Que tú busques en otro bloque, si tú pintas que tú vives en el edificio, tú eres de, tú eres de familia, pero te gusta la calle, no me para ese callejón que ahí se está fumando para él, y ella para la loca la pone en tu vida. I don't know what that means. <laughs> like I said, it's like, oh, I need to start listening to a lot more Dimbo because there's so much thing I can learn. Uh, where is the other song at? Oh, yeah. Eh, ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Cómo fue? ¿Qué fue? Y lo puse en mi Instagram. En el marzo. En el marzo de, de este año. Ashley. Okay, triste. Eso se llama esa, esa canción. Triste. Aquí en ese caso yo, yo digo triste en lugar de triste. Triste, triste, triste. Ah, no, yo no sé. Suena muy loco. Pero triste o oh, triste. Um, ¿dónde, ¿Dónde está? Eh... Triste pa Joan Retro. Uh, Alright, this one will be fast. This one's faster, actually. For me, it's like the faster, the better. En serio. ¿Cómo sabe tanto? Eso no. That's very fast. Uh, I can't speak that fast. I don't think. But practice, I don't want to practice one. That'd be cool if I could master this one. I don't think there's even, yeah, this one doesn't have lyrics though. Let's see if I can find some. But yeah. I can only speak so fast. That's what's hard for me, too. That's hard. One thing, too, again, speak Spanish. There's another thing to try to figure out how to speak Spanish fast, right? So it's, it's a lot. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I can kind of sound like a Dominican. All right, well, no, can you say it the same flow as them? Can you? No, I can't. Uh, can, you, can you do really fast, but like fast and smooth? So mucha cosita, de verdad. Mucha vaina. Eh, triste. Por Joan. 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 Triste. Triste por ti. Eso. Eh, no. Triste por Joan. Ay. La melema. La, la, la melema. La melema música. La melema. It'd be funny if I can't find any. I might not be able to find any lyrics to this song. <laughs> so yeah, I probably won't be able to follow along. Unless, well, you know what? I don't think I've ever done that before. Like really try to write my own lyrics. So maybe I'll do. I can try to do that. I can catch some of the words, but not like all of them. 
Yeah, they speak. I always say Dominicans, some not all of them, some speak kind of more, more, more tracadito, un poco más despacio, más lento. Pero otros, actually, I'll, I'll pick, I'll meet, find a YouTube video. Some, I say they speak like they, like they tell stories, like they're trying to tell three stories in one minute, like three stories as fast as possible. It's pretty insane sometimes. But again, it's just not just fast. It's with like this ritmo con sazone with flow. It's just like, oh, uh, I love it. But you know, so bueno con... Eh, did it come up for some reason? Eh? Oh. Problemas con... Los comento. Okay. Let me find one. Oh, Rossi, I wrote no Capricornio. ¿Qué es con ello? Te va a ver. Capricornio TV. Mm, con ella. Un poco de pedidos con varias personas, pero déjame ver. ¿Cuál sería lo más rápido? Para que vea como uno tono también. Eh, no, ¿qué, ¿Qué fue? La viene de extraña. Me voy a meter. Buenos días. Viviendo pobre por un día. Susuga. Estoy buscando un video. ¿Qué es lo que? Yo no veo lo. Lo correcto. Ah, es ella. Con la cajada muy extraña. Como en ella, como tiene un tono un poco más, un, un poquito más alta. Con la cagada. Esta está loca. Dale para acá. Dale para acá. Ahí dice otra persona. Dos horas después. Dos horas después. Escúchalo, escúchalo allá. Escúchalo a los a los acentos diferentes. Como él. En comparación con ella. Va buena, ¿verdad? Es muy bastante rápido también, ¿verdad? That's what people like fast. It's like, like that, like that fast. But it would be like for a full conversation that fast. It's not just like, well, sometimes it could be like a little burst, but then sometimes you just hear like a conversation that's just fast the whole time. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's crazy. But I love it. I mean, not crazy. Para mí es un poquito loco, pero para ellos es normal. Normalito. Así es como se llaman allá. Con un poco de velocidad. I'm trying to find another one. Eh, me. Otro video que muestra eh, la velocidad. No, ahí yo. Ahí está poniendo un poco, un poco más lenta. Y otro es otro también. Eso es lo que no me complica. That's the hard part too. Is like, eh, is again speaking. Like maybe with the, you know, with I can I can kind of you know maybe maybe make some a accents or whatever, right? But again, with like words that I have practiced over the years, like some things I can say really fast, but other things I can't say really fast, let alone with an accent. So that's also really difficult. So for me, right? For me to be able to speak more with an accent, 
with the thicker accents, um, with a lot of words that I don't really use or I don't know, or with sentences I don't really use or whatnot, then I would have to practice saying it over and over and over again. And that's basically how I've, you know, increased a lot of my other speaking skills. Like to be able, like the like the skill to be able to speak faster. Like now I can speak faster than I was speaking, let's say, two years ago versus three years ago versus four years ago. Like there's a whole strategy behind that. Um, but yeah, kind of the same thing here. It's like, okay, bueno, you you better decir una cosita, una cosita muy rapidísima. Pero, de, pero dependiendo de, de tópico, porque a veces que, bueno, no, como nada, nada, nada llega a mi, nada llega a, ay, mi madre, la, me, me falta la pronunciación con muchas con mucha palabras. Como así, it's like, I stutter a lot when it comes to certain things. So I had to practice saying these things over and over and over again with the accent, the, with the right tone, right pronunciation, not stutter, not mumble. And it's like just repetition, 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 practice, practice, practice. Speaking to myself all the time. Because again, if I don't speak to myself, like this stuff is like this, I won't like improve those areas because it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of mistakes. It takes to do it over and over again before I can actually uh, speak faster, before I can say things faster. It's also kind of very, very annoying, honestly. So. Yes, this is all these reasons why it's very challenging to learn Dominican Spanish, why it's really difficult to develop an, like an accent. But also, I haven't been doing myself a favor because I haven't been focusing on it that much this year. Like I should be, like I like I could. Like my whole plan, my whole plan, if I really wanted to, if I if I really wanted to really focus on on learning, would be I think I said before like at the beginning of the live stream. Is my window? Mi beta no está abierta. ¿Qué está pasando? Como así. Hablando con ese acento, un acento muy fuerte, eh, como todos los días, siempre. Más alto, con ese tono que suena un poco más, eh, más alto. Porque eso es acento que yo, eh, que yo he escuchado eh, en las redes, eh, en los videos de YouTube, en todos los podcasts también. Y también es un acento que me pega. Tú me entiendes. Oíste. So, like, I would have to talk like that, which is very exhausting. But um, there's different accents, too. Like, uh, I've, I've, I've learned that different accents are difficult, are more difficult than others to, like, replicate and to imitate. So, there's also that aspect. I need to figure out, like, which accent is, 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 is easier for me to use. I go the easy, like the easier route, which like go that way, or try to develop an accent that's like really hard for me to develop. So there's also that. But like for me to speak like that with that kind of tone all the time, again, like I don't want to speak with that tone all day long. It just because <laughs> I have, I have to yell. I have to yell. I have to yell, and for me, I just I feel like I sound weird. But anyway, um, I'm about to do that around my house. So if I, if I really wanted to like develop my Dominican accent, what I would do, I would probably won't do this because I just I have to learn for the like for my YouTube channel and for other things, other reasons, I have to like consume a lot of content uh for Spanish. For but my plan basically would just kind of do what I was doing right there, listen to a lot of music, look at the lyrics, repeat the lyrics, so I can so I can learn things like that. Come on, come on, no, 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 no está acá. Ella está dando una vuelta por la, uh, ella está dando una vuelta por, por el bloque. Ella está dando una vuelta por el bloque. Hey, she's walking around the block. It's like basically what he said, something like that. Dando una vuelta por el bloque. Ella no es, ella no es, ella no es, ella no es, no es de acá. Ella está dando una vuelta. Ay, ay, como, carajo. Mierda. Eh, ella no, ella no eres de acá. No, ella no, no eres de acá. No, ella no eres, no eres por acá. Ella está dando una vuelta por el bloque. So it was something like that. But I'll be doing something like that, right? Again, right there, I messed up over and over and over again. It's really annoying. But I don't know that song. So repetition like that, a lot of shadowing. Like for me, just watching that video, it was a lot easier to get like really to like produce that tone of voice 
just by listening and then repeating. So I've, no, and I've noticed that as well. Like for me, like just to, to, to speak like shadow when I'm not listening to anything, it's harder for me to do. But when I have it like right in my ear, I'm listening to it. It's way easier to actually try to like replicate the accent. So that's, that's such a really good tip right there for me, at least. And the same thing, of course, like if I'm speaking to a Dominican, it's going to be different because like when I'm speaking to a Dominican, I'm hearing them speak. So then I'm like, I, 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 I kind of like adapt to how they're speaking as well, like in that moment. Versus like if I'm como si tuviera hablando con uno de mis amigos mexicanos, I'm talking like I'm talking more like come on, porque porque como porque hiciste eso way and stuff like that. I speak more with like Mexican state with my friends, so that's a little bit different. Como que chingón way, me mira esa chapel, como ay, cómo sería? Me me mira esa chapelita acá. Or, hmm, yeah. Like I said, it's hard for me to do things like on the fly. Like, I would have to like be in a conversation for like, como para, para salir, para salir bien y más suave de mi boca. But yeah, it's hard to just, like do things like in, como eh, de repente, esp espontaneamente. But that's what I would do. I listen to content as much as possible all day long, just Dominican Spanish. Listening to it all the time. Doesn't matter if I can understand it. Depends. Am I focusing on trying to take notes? If I'm trying to take notes, then yeah. I want to make sure that I'm actually paying attention. I'm not just having it in the background. All right, I'm trying to figure out what words are you know they're using. Um, write down some words, write down some expressions, write all those down. Um, as many as I can. Not every single thing. I mean, there's so many things I don't understand, but you know, some things. Then I would also go use Hello Talk. I don't know if you've used HelloTalk before, but it's a, a but it is a language exchange application. I would use HelloTalk because it's super easy. Like right now, I can go on HelloTalk. I could ask a question on HelloTalk, and I could get a an answer pretty fast from the Spanish speakers that are on this language exchange application. That's how useful it is. That's actually what happens a lot of times. Or no, I don't use it, use it that often anymore. But that's what I would do all the time. I was going in here. I would post a moment. It's called a moment on here. I would just post a question. I guess my last one. My last one was my last moment I posted was. Let me see. About 116 of them. My last one was. Oh, I didn't answer this one. It's in January. Oh, okay. So this one was last year, December. Yeah, December. In December of last year, I said, ¿Qué es lo que más le gusta de vivir en Colombia? So, what, what, uh, oh yeah, what is like the, what, what is it that, oh, trying to translate, what, what do you most like about living in Colombia? And then they gave me, and then they gave me like answers, like, just like that. That's why I love using Hello Talk. It's, it's, you can just talk with native Spanish speakers all day if you really wanted to. It's, probably one of the best applications if you want to uh learn if you want to learn how to speak because they're going to help you learn how to how to speak and like reading natives natives uh native text as well because people are it's like almost like thinking of like a twitter so people are posting like whatever they want on there so you can read their comments what they're posting so you got you get to see the more like native texting which is different Thing one notice too as a Spanish learner that when you're texting a, a Spanish speaker, uh, the way that they text may not look the same exact way that they that they speak. Well, the same thing, I guess, in any kind of language. So texting language is different than speaking language. I've learned. So a lot of times, if my my Spanish speaking friends are texting me something in Spanish, I'm just like, "What are you saying?" Because it's a different way. It's you know, this is a different format. It's a different way of, of communicating. Like, for example, like, you know, if you're speaking with your friends, you know, you do like, you know, BRB, FYI. Um, ah, oh my goodness. I think it's English. CAP, like things like that, right? Think, think of those like acronyms and such, or just like you like cut off words, you cut off, you cut off letters, like same thing, I suppose, but like in Spanish. So it's like a whole nother like Spanish language to learn almost to a certain extent, because it's different. But anyway, so yeah, write, I'd write all those down. Then I would ask my friends, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean, bro? 
Getting okay. Um, I'll use Hello Talk as well. My friends unavailable. Try to I just really try to learn as much jargon as possible. The more jargon that I know, the more Dominicans I can understand. The more the more Dominican content that I can understand as well. So that's going to help with more with like comprehensive, <clears throat> the comprehensive approach. Um, so being able to understand them. But again, I'm really focused on the accent. So a lot of times, yes, I do want to understand like the words that they're saying. But then the other aspect is it is I'm not going to be focusing. I'm not going to be taking notes. I was going to be focusing on the tone of the voice. Again, like kind of what that guy, I forgot what he said. But with her, I forgot what she said too. But again, like the different the different tones, different accents. His voice was very, very low. Her voice was, you know, a lot more high pitched. So I like I like her I like her like her style of, of speaking. It's like very very high, not just like high pitch. It's just a specific. It's just it's different. It's one that I've heard before when I was in RAV, but it's like a newer type. It's a newer like accent that I've heard, or it's it's a newer tone. I don't say, I'm just say accent. It's like a newer accent that I've that I've heard. Like when I was there, I don't know if I heard anything exactly like that, but I think it's what, like one of her newer accents that I've heard. Uh, that I've that I've heard for like for the first time, like probably within the last year, like her specific way of speaking from that YouTube video. So it's really interesting. So there's that. Um, yeah. So yeah, a lot of it just focusing on them. <clears throat> They're doing a lot of shadowing as well. Again, to, you know, listening to them. Stuff like that. Shadowing, um, copying, kind of like a little kid, listening, copying to what they're saying. Um, but yeah, I mean that it just helps out really much. It helps out so much if you're just like listening, just just listen to how they sound, just focus on how they sound. It just helps out so much if you really want to develop an develop an accent. You just listen to like a lot of it, listen to it, listen to it. And then really like the, the accent kind of comes a little bit more naturally. Like for me, when I first started to learn the Dominican accent, I was out be, before I even had a lot of exposure, like listening to the language. Like when I was there, I tried to force an accent, even though it was my first time being in DR. I didn't know anything about the the, the dialect there, the accents there. But I still try to I should try to fo force one because a little bit uh insecure uh, with my with my accent at the time. Or even the second time that I went, kind of the same thing. I was still kind of like trying to force like a fake accent, even though I had no exposure to the language, like not enough exposure to the language to be even the fake an accent. So I was trying to fake an accent without even knowing about it. It's like right now, if I try to like fake a British accent, I can't do that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that for y'all. But um, if I try to like, like force it, like a British accent, like I can't because I don't even really know how they sound. I, don't, I have some British friends, but we don't talk like that. Never been to uh, England either. So. It's kind of like that. Like you don't, you need a lot of exposure, but like once you get a lot of exposure, it, it just becomes way easier to actually start to not force uh, an accent, but to develop it, to develop your accent because you heard it so much. And speaking, speaking and listening is connected. It's weird. I don't know how to explain it, but it is. So like the more you listen, it becomes easier. Like okay. To, to replicate how they sound because now you know how they sound becomes easier. Yeah, it's hard to explain. But it's like the more you understand, like the easier it is to replicate. Like the, the more that you hear all these different sounds, different tones, how they say the word, tranquilo, tranquilo, like that. No malito. Like hearing that over and over again. And you start to do it like, oh, no, no, no malito, no. Oh, it's not normal. It's not normal. It's not normalito. It's not normalito. So I'm asking more normalito, normalito. But it's because you know, like you hear it over and over again. You hear it a lot. So that's why it's just a lot of just like listening, a lot, a lot of listening, a lot of listening, and taking notes. And then I mean that the listening part is I mean it's pretty chill, right? It doesn't take that much effort, I suppose. It is a lot of time before you can actually start to understand like a, a specific dialect. Right? For me, like Colombians, I I went there for the first time ever this year. I don't understand a lot of them either because again, I don't have never had Colombian friends, never had exposure to Colombian Spanish, so I don't read, I don't know Colombian Spanish at all. 
But if I were to listen to you know Colombian content a lot more, start to learn more of the jargon there, it would make it a lot easier. I mean, even right now, I can't really you know imitate any accents because again, I only spent five days there, haven't had exposure to the to the dialect there, to the accents, the people who don't listen to that much content there. Um, the only thing I remember was kind of what I said earlier was that gracia. That's the only thing I remember. It was like that kind of tonality. It's a word. Gracias. That. Um, oh, and si, senor. And that. It kind of sounded like that. So it's more of like a, I don't know if slur is not the best word. Almost like more of like a muffled. More of like a muffled. But I was in Cali. Y la gente en Cali no suena igual que la gente en Medellín. For, the, uh, for example, o la gente de Barranquilla, o la gente, ¿cuáles son otras ciudades en en Colombia? Barranquilla, Cali, eh, Medellín, yeah, like that. So that the speaking part would be a little bit hard to. I was have to focus it, focus on that a lot again. Listening, but then I'll do a lot of uh, a lot of shadowing, but then speaking to myself as well, but with the accent all day long, thinking with that accent. Because usually when I speak to myself, I'm not doing it with it like a thick accent, but I have to practice it a lot again. Um, yeah, it would just take yeah, it's a lot of work, a lot, a lot more dedication basically, which I'm not doing, I'm not being lazy. Um. But again, I focus on a lot of other things when it comes to learning Spanish. I'm learning French as well. And language learning is not the only thing I do in life. So that makes it difficult. And I'm not in DR. And time is limited. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I gave us a dos horas. It's already been two hours. So two hours, six minutes. Great. I'm me ranting, as usual. So I think, yeah, I think that's uh, about enough. Uh, for today. Uh, so, yeah, definitely handle yeah, some of the challenges that I face right now. So, really, they're not, I mean, they, they are challenging, but they aren't, well, actually, I won't say that because I haven't reached a point where it's like I have a very thick accent uh, from a Spanish speaking country. So, I've never, yeah, I was going to say something like, oh, like, I've already done this before. It's like, no, like I've, I've done some of these strategies. But not to the full potential because I don't have a thick accent, and a lot of times it goes away if I don't actually listen to a lot of content in, from DR in the first place. So it's hard to maintain an accent too, and it's also it can also be or you can also lose an accent too. I've learned, um, it's weird, but yeah, you also lose an accent as well. Kind of like you don't you don't use it if you don't use it, you lose it. Same thing with like Spanish in general. Like you don't speak Spanish for like a long time. Then you could probably like lose some of your ability to to speak Spanish or whatnot. So there's that. Um, yeah. So that would be the plan. I should yeah probably I'll probably listen to more Dimbo. <laughs> I love Dimbo a lot. A lot of slang. Um, but it's kind of like 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 the cursed child of like DR. Because if you think about it, from what I know culturally, if you think about it like Dimbo is. It's, it's kind of looked up, it's the way they look upon Dimbo. It's almost like, think of like rap in the US. It's kind of like that. Same thing, the same type of kind of cultural like issues or whatnot or societal issues. It's kind of like that. It's like, oh, this, oh, this, this is terrible music. You just talk about blah, 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 drugs, women, blah, 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 sex, all that kind of stuff. Same thing. Um, but that's kind of like, like the equivalent would be like Dimbo. I'll say in DR specifically. Because, I mean, it's, it's very different from, let's say, the next generation up or two generations up. The music is very different. So, for example, like bachata, I think, like, even like even bachata, what used to be, like, traditional bachata used to be, like, restricted from what I remember, from, like, being played. But now you go from bachata be, to, be, to be more accepted, bachata to dembo. It's like, <laughs> they're, like, worlds apart. So it's, it's kind of the, the generation gap. Anyway. I'm just ranting now, but what was I talking about? Yeah, Dimbo. Let's do more Dimbo so I can kind of like learn how to speak a little bit faster, which is a whole process in itself, trying to speak uh, faster. But again, it's just a lot of practice. 
and you have to mess up over and over and over again, and you can't care. So that's kind of the hard part of wanting to speak faster. It's like you're gonna like for me, just like messing up over my words, stumbling, mumbling, slurring my words, slurring my letters. But then getting to that point where it's like, okay, I can finally say like this sentence like kind of fast. Say it over and over and over and over again. Okay, it's a little bit faster now. Just like that. It's just a lot of work, a lot of repetition, a lot of focus, a lot of energy, dedication, time. And time is and time and consistency. A lot of things when it comes to developing a language skills, it's all about that. A lot of it's maybe challenging. A lot of it is just doing a certain thing consistently repeatedly over a long period of time, just like vocabulary. You keep learning one word a day, then eventually you get to a hundred words a day or listening to, you know, listening to something. At the beginning, you understand 0%, but then one day you get to 10%. One day you understand 20% of what you hear. Next day you get to, or next month, you get to 40% and so on and so forth. Kind of the same thing. Developing an accent have to listen to a lot of content, a lot of content from that particular country. I, I think I had a conversation with, yeah, I had a conversation with, yeah, I had a conversation about the accents and such um, with a teacher, an English teacher. He's from, well, his family's from Venezuela, from, hi, what's that, uh, Curacao? I think it's an island. They have like, a, it's like a mixed, it's, oh, so his family speaks English, I think, uh, it, was, it was French, Spanish, Portuguese. It was, oh, Papa Mento. I think Papa Mento is like a, a mixture of Portuguese, Spanish, and French, I want to say. Something like that. But anyway, we had a conversation about accents. He was kind of um, just kind of reaffirming what, what I was kind of assuming that, like, yeah, like if, if you really want to like, develop an accent, you have to listen to like, you know, a lot of content. It's like something you really have to develop. Something you really have to work, you have to work on, right? Because there's plenty of people, for example, maybe in the U.S., who are non-native non -native English speakers, but they still have accents, but they can still speak English well. Um, so it's kind of like that. Like accents is not necessary, but for me, I like doing it because it's fun. I like the process of developing an accent, like all the, everything that's involved with it. So um, very, very fun. As well, what was I saying? <clears throat> I'm not speaking my train of thought. Yeah, I, I like the whole process of developing an accent. Like, I like the process. Any any kind of process that involves language learning, I love. I love just, like, studying. love to find out. So it's really interesting. And Jackie Chan, for example, right? Um, Like, he's been in the U.S. forever. And <clears throat> I've been around our English speakers, for example. But he still has, he still has a fairly thick accent, right? So it's kind of like that. It's like not everybody just, you don't need like an accent or whatnot. It's just one of those things if you want to, you, know, you can, but I guess it sounds like it's just, it's just a lot of work to develop an accent. That's what it sounds like to me. Like just might just be best just to uh, stick with the neutral accent. And yeah, yeah. Benito. Okay. Hola, buena. Bears of God's Light says, how many hours practice and listening content to increase these percentages? So that is a good question. And I don't have an answer. There's not there's not really an answer. Desde, desde mi propia punto de vista. It's it's not as it's so it's not really how I uh, it's so hard to explain. Listening comprehension is just not it's not. It's not really how it works. Mm. How do I explain this? Very simple. That's not going to take another hour to explain. I don't think about how about this. I wouldn't think about percentages. I would just think about always just trying to improve your listening skills, if that makes sense. Because it's really hard. It's it's basically impossible in my opinion, to really like kind of measure the difference between 30%, 40%, 60%. We say these things, but from my knowledge, we it's just like, a, it's just something that we think in our head. Like, oh, I think like it's around 50% that I understand, 10, like 20%. When I say these things, I'm not saying like, um, 
Ay, mi madre. Mierda. ¿Cómo? ¿Qué te digo? ¿Qué sé yo? It is... I'm not really trying to say... I'm just... I'm using the, the percentages as references just for you to have an idea. But it's not... I'm not saying something like, okay, if you study 50 hours... If you listen to 500 hours or 20 hours of content every single week, you're going to be able to understand 20% of everything that you hear in Spanish. It's not that simple. And number two, again, like that, that percentage number is just used like as a reference. It's not that, you know, that, that most, that, that most Spanish learners just kind of that say, right? We say 30, 40%, like who knows exactly what percentage it is. The, the point is, the percentages don't really matter. It's just more of focusing on, I want to just, I want to improve my listening comprehension skills. What do I do to do that? Well, there are many different things, and that would take like an hour to explain. Um, I mean, there's many different things that you can do to increase the percentage of how much you can comprehend. But I wouldn't focus on specific percentages. I only use these numbers as references, just so you can have an idea. But listening comprehension is way more complicated than that. Listening comprehension has a lot to do with not just with how much vocabulary that, that you know. It really doesn't have, I don't even say how many hours of practice that you have necessarily. Because again, listening comprehension is not that simple. It's not as simple as, okay, I'm going to once I, after I, I listen to 500 hours of Spanish content, I'm going to be able to understand 40% of, of Spanish speakers. I'm going to be able to understand 60% of of people. It's not, it's not, it's not how conversations work. For example, we have conversations in our native language where we don't understand our friends. Maybe because we're tired, maybe because they're slurring their words, maybe because they're using words we don't know. That's what listening comprehension is, is all about. Um, if you ask me. So is, is, yeah. It has a lot more to do than just like the vocabulary that you know. It has a lot more to do even like uh, more than accents. It could just be you just have miscommunication. So, yeah, it's just like a different way. Like I used to think that way as well. I listen just for this many hours. Like I never think about that anymore. Even like with French, I just like I'm just going to try to imp I'm going to. I know I know what's going to move the needle. And I'm going to do those things to continue to move to, to move the needle, to increase my listening comprehension skills. But there is no set amount of hours. There's no set amount of even like words you need to know because that's not how communication necessarily works. Communication, there's always miscommunications, but it could be the way that you express that word, that, that phrase that someone didn't understand, the way that you said it, the way that you pronounced it. It has nothing to do or that, that they pronounce it. And it has nothing to do with how many hours. It's just the way that this person is speaking that you don't understand, if that makes sense. Again, without ranting for like an hour about this, because I always talk about this, actually. For example, people in their native languages don't understand each other. Let's say with relationships. I love talking about this. In a relationship, you both speak the same language, but you don't understand that person. And it's not because you need to increase the amount of hours that you need to list, listen to English. It's just because you're having a miscommunication. So that's the whole thing with like listening comprehension. You could hear someone and they could be like, what did you just say? Because it's about context. So that's why, yeah, you can't really list, you can't really measure your listening comprehension skills just by how many hours, how many hours that you're listening to something, if that makes sense. In my opinion, this is my opinion. Scientifically speaking, I don't know. Linguistic, ling, linguistically speaking, I have no idea because I'm not a linguist. I'm just a Spanish student. Neither am I a Spanish teacher. Para que sepan, no soy profe, yo soy estudiante. Nada más, nada menos. This is just from what I've learned and my perspective. So what other people say, I have no idea. But that's my understanding based off conversations that I've had and my just understanding of learning a language. So I'll think about Think about it more like that. You can listen to 5,000 hours of Spanish. And, okay, you kind of understand a lot of people. But in a conversation, again, that doesn't mean that you're still going to be able to understand someone in a conversation. 
because that's how conversations work. It's always been, a, it's always, or many miscommunication. There's a lot of miscommunication when you're speaking with someone um, that has nothing to do with hours of listening to that particular language, basically, is probably what I should have said in the second sentence. <laughs> uh, but hopefully that makes sense. I don't know. I'm not a poeta. But yes, uh, let's get to the, it's been the end of this. Uh, I can't believe it's already been two hours. I don't understand how, come on, come on, el tiempo pasa tan rápido. Diablo. They make an accent. Tonight, I probably should listen to some more dimbo and to some more content and do some more uh, accent training because that'd be really cool. Be able to like uh, imitate more accents and stuff, and to like really get a thick accent. Oh, if I got a thick accent, a thick Dominican accent, oh, that would be amazing. That would be so much fun. Because I would just confuse, I would just confuse the hell out of people. Honestly, I just confuse people all the time. Pero si no has hecho un, por favor, suscríbete a mi canal. Subscribe to my con, uh, my my channel here. Watch my new video uh, that came out today. Called, I put it here in the chat. Um, hi, one moment. How to roll your R, Spanish pronunciation. So watch that. That is my new video from this morning. And, or how to roll slash fill your R, Spanish pronunciation. So that is available to watch. And then for the members of this channel, you can watch your the, the early access video. And that will be available to the public sometime in the next few days. But the next video that I have uh, is called, If I Can't Speak Spanish, Should I Listen More? So that one's kind of almost like the kind of the opposite of what we were just talking about. Like, oh, should I listen? Like, how, like what the percentage I need to, like, to understand more? This one's, this one's about, should I listen more if I can't speak Spanish? So this, one, this is a very fun video to record. So I hope all you like it. I hope you learn from it as well. So that was really fun to record. It's, it's, it's a really interesting topic, I'll say that. It's a really interesting topic and can be very, very confusing. So there's that. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure that you um, see this link right here. I put it in the chat as well. Or in the description of my videos, it's called the Spanish Conversation Blueprint. So that's something I made a while back. Um, it's just a PDF with five tips for having better conversations in Spanish. It's called the Spanish Conversation Blueprint. So once you like click this link, you just put your name in and your email, you'll be subscribed to my email list. I also send out newsletters, um, newsletters every single week. And those have tips for learning Spanish and language learning. So I talk, I'll get some tips as well. And my newsletter, but this specifically, you'll subscribe to my email list and then you receive a PDF that is free. And it just has tips again for having better conversations in Spanish from my perspective, from having a lot of conversations with Spanish speakers. Um, I just wanted to provide this resource to to my audience here, um, to all the all Spanish learners, even I mean all language learners, honestly. I would use this, use these five tips for any for any language, really. But these five tips in this Spanish conversation blueprint have helped me out a lot um, um, to have better conversations. And these are tips that are what I've analyzed, I've reflected on, that have improved my, my speaking skills. So definitely check that out. Um, that link right there, again, in the chat that I have on the screen here, if, you, if you're not looking at the screen right now, it's... Uh, it's called the Spanish Conversation Blueprint in the descriptions of my video, so you can find that. So there's that. That that's a free PDF. That's a free resource for you, and you get subscribed to my email list to get more free newsletters. And then recently, a week ago, I released to the public my first ever my first ever product. <clears throat> so this is called the Spanish Resource Kit, first ever product actually I've ever made in my life. So, and also for this channel. So I definitely want to make more products in the future. So again, so I can give even more resources for everybody. So I'm planning on making some more products. I'm trying to figure out what the other ones would be. But this is a good start. And I just like supplying a lot of a lot, a lot of content. Because I mean, videos are one thing. You know, got my Twitter and my Instagram. 
uh, we share some Spanish, uh, Spanish tips on those as well. My newsletter, but then also this now is new. So this is another great way that I can, you know, share with my audience, right? So, and with all these Spanish, oh, with all you Spanish learners. So the Spanish resource kit has over 60 resources for learning Spanish. And I also love it because these are resources that I have collected, a lot of resources that I've collected over the past four years of my Spanish learning journey. So for me, it's like really special because it's just like, oh, wow, these are, you know, a lot of resources that I've, I've come across, right? The past, you know, six years, because I mean, it takes a lot of time to sometimes gain a lot of resources. So a lot of resources that I've used, a lot of resources that have, have helped me. And um, <clears throat> so definitely check that out as well. That one's also linked in the chat here. It's also linked in the descriptions of the video. So if you can't find it later, but it's called the Spanish, uh, the Spanish resource kit. So it has, uh, has resources like YouTube videos, songs, TV shows, podcasts, and for all levels, really. So, I mean, if you're an advanced learner, there's some content in there for you. If you're a beginner learner, everything in there is going to be for you. Um, yeah, beginner, intermediate, advanced uh, Spanish learner is something for all of you. So if you need some resources or you're looking for some, if you don't have any re resources at all, it's really good for you. If you don't, if you have resources, but you would like some more, this would be good for you as well. And it's a good way to support my channel as well. So definitely check that out. Link is in the chat and in the descriptions of my videos. So that will take you directly to the, the product page so you can check out what other what other resources are inside and what you get with that PDF. So definitely check that out. Please put info in the community post. Absolutely. So, yeah, I have put the info in the community post, but I'll definitely do it again uh, periodically. So, like, yeah, the past the previous week I have put that in there. Uh, um, yeah, I've talked about the the Spanish resource kit, but I will definitely keep on posting that as well. Then in my newsletter as well, it's also a part of that. Uh, I usually put it in there. So definitely buy that. If you don't need resources, share it with your friends, please. <laughs> share the Spanish resource kit, my new product with your friends as well, or your language learning friends that may have a desire to you know, learn Spanish. So That'd be very helpful. So on a, you know, sell as many as possible. And ultimate goal, of course, is to have you to be my full-time job because this is not my full-time job. It's not really even a part-time job. Uh, I kind of do this on the side. So I have a full-time job. And this is something I do when I have free time, which is not that much uh, all the time. So that's kind of hard. So basically, you know, the, the more that this channel grows, uh, you know, the more that you guys continue to support with donations and now, you know, buying a product, uh, subscribing to the channel, subscribing to my email list and getting that uh, free Spanish conversation blueprint, liking videos, sharing videos with your friends, sharing videos on social media helps me out tremendously. Like you have no idea. Like word of mouth is extremely helpful for for channels like these or for I mean, for YouTube in general I mean, for really kind of anything on social media. Like every little thing helps, any kind of share. So thank you, everyone um, who has who has bought the Spanish resource kit already and has shared it with their friends and have shared my videos with your friends and have joined the live streams. Thank you for all the support. Again, desde el profundo, el profundo de mi corazón, mil gracias a todos ustedes porque, ya tú sabes, eh, que ese camino con YouTube es un poco duro, creando contenido, porque yo soy nuevo, yo soy, yo soy bastante fresco. Entonces, todo lo nuevo para mí, eh, nunca he producido videos antes de tener ese canal. Entonces, estoy estudiando muchísimo eh, para saber cómo puedo mejorar mi video. Eh, es muy caótico a veces. Y requiere mucho tiempo. Pero ahí voy. So, yes. Hopefully, you know, continue to grow this channel. We're getting close to 6,000 subscribers. Get, get to 10,000 subscribers. Get more uh, Spanish learners buying 
the Spanish resource kit, and hopefully that'll be helpful. And actually, uh, leave a review as well of the Spanish resource kit after you buy it, after you use the resources, you know, you check everything out. And let me know if it's something that you like or you don't like. Because again, it's my first ever product that I ever made for this channel and in life. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's good or not, or if it's resourceful. If you want something like this in the future again, if you don't want it, because if nobody likes it, then I won't create another product like this, of course. So I want to create products that you actually want to buy, that are going to be useful for you, that are going to be helpful for you on your Spanish learning journey. That's what this channel is all about, providing the best resources possible, providing the best content possible uh, that I possibly can, the best tips that I possibly can from my experience. So, yeah. And so with Dolo. So definitely check out that link if you haven't yet, uh, at least like, you know, to see um, the website, see what's see uh, what everything is included with the kit. Again, even if you don't need resources, please send that to your friends, uh, show it on Instagram, Twitter, all that kind of thing. So we can get the word out. Same thing with my channel. Tell your friends about my channel. Tell your friends about like the videos and such. Share the videos on your social media. Share your videos or my videos and yeah, your social media with your friends, friends who may be interested in learning Spanish. Because I talk to a lot of people, uh, usually, like on a monthly basis, you know, that want to learn Spanish. So I'm like, oh, you want to learn Spanish? Tell me more. Why? <laughs> then I'm like, hey, did you know I have a uh, a YouTube channel? Because I mean, this YouTube channel is also about you know inspiring others, right? Because you know you probably have seen some of my growth. Um, as a Spanish learner, you know, I have videos from from 2020. I have uh, some videos from when I was in college in 2019 speaking Spanish. And very embarrassing for me sometimes. But you get to see all the progress. You get to see all the mistakes that I've made when I'm speaking Spanish with, like, with italki tutors and such or speaking Spanish to myself. So you get to see a lot of growth. You get to see my struggles. You get to see my insecurities, everything that I've struggled with on this journey. That's what I try to show people. Real, normalito, desnudo, sin filtro. Me, me encanta compartir todo, todo de mí en ese camino. ¿Me entiende? Eh, eso, esto es importante para mí. Para mostrar y demostrar, o oh, bueno, mostrar mejor la realidad de este camino. To, to show the reality of being a Spanish learner, the difficulties. It's not always just like, oh, um, I don't know, like, oh, I had this amazing conversation in Spanish. Um, or, you know, I surprised this this Spanish speaker. That kind of thing. Uh, I don't know that kind of personality for kind of those type of videos. Uh, but I mean, not, not just like the videos, but like in general. Like a lot of my conversations have not been fun, but they were really stressful. And I was really anxious. And it made me very overwhelmed. And also, I'm an introvert. Um, so there's that, if you didn't know. So there's that aspect that I had to get over as well. Because normally, I like to be alone <laughs> and read books. So that's kind of my personality. So trying to get over that and really getting out there, having a conversation with native Spanish speakers, doing it over and over and over again, and, and facing my insecurities, messing up, in front of people, feeling feeling stupid, all that stuff I talk about on this channel. Because I want to show you la realidad. De esta vida. Es muy dura a veces. Pero bueno. That is all I have for today. Again, thank you for joining this live stream, Spanish Nerd live stream number 68, Challenges of Learning Dominican Spanish. I hope you enjoyed it. If you came in a little bit late, make sure that you watch the replay of this live stream because we have two hours and 34 minutes on this live stream. That's very, very long, I think. So thank you for, yeah. Uh, pasando tiempo o pasando, oh, pasando tiempo o gastando tiempo. Ah, I don't know the difference between those two. I was trying to say past time with me. Hmm. I think it's pasar tiempo because gastar tiempo is como like waste. Como gastar tiempo. Pasar, sí, pasar tiempo conmigo. Yo creo que es eso. Eso, eso, eso es correcto. Pero pa, vamos a, vamos a. Ok, sí, vamos a utilizar esto. Gracias por pasar tiempo conmigo. And yeah, again, make sure that you turn on your notifications because I always 
we'll be having you know more videos coming out in the future. So should we have another video coming out tomorrow? And really excited for that one. Hope you hopefully you like that. Make sure that you like the videos as well. Share them with your friends again. Let's let's make Spanish blueprints known to the world. I want to reach as many people as possible because there's plenty of people that want to learn Spanish, but they just don't. Or, you know, for whatever reason that they have. So they just need a little push. I have I have very I have multiple friends that say, Oh yeah, I would like to learn Spanish, but they aren't learning Spanish. And I always try to push them to learn Spanish. I'm like, you have to just start, please. Like I'd be begging my friends, please just start. <laughs> please <laughs> uh stop wasting time. <laughs> So, I mean, there's plenty of people like who, you know, who say they want to learn Spanish. So many people, especially in the United States, because so many Spanish speakers here, right? All right maybe they, they, you know, they grew up around Hispanic, uh, Hispanic Latino culture. So there's plenty of people who want to learn Spanish, don't know how, or need some, you know, need some, need, need a little push. And a little push, or una, una pata en el culo, para, para empezar. And hopefully I can give that little, that little push. Uh, and that motivation to to start and help for how how to start, how to advance the language skills, etc. E etc. Bueno, okay, me retiro, me voy. Hablamos luego again. Thank you for joining, and we will see each other or well, not see each other. You will see me. I will see you in the chat. Uh, más tarde luego, and have fun with your Spanish learning journey. Stay strong. Learn Spanish every single day a little bit. Doesn't have to be for a long time, but at least for a little bit every single day. And yeah, don't quit because it's a very fun journey and it will change your life because it definitely has changed my life. And you should be able to see that through my Instagram, through my Twitter, and uh, through my YouTube videos. How much learning Spanish has changed my life and having all these experiences have changed my life. And don't forget about my new product, Spanish Resource Kit. Make sure that you buy that. If you don't need it, send it to a friend. So thank you again. Adios, nos vemos. Cuídate.